Hey y'all, Barley here, and it's time for another episode of Friday Night Fights! Uh, tonight, um, if you didn't know what Friday Night Flights were, it's basically where I fly in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I have a flight that's assigned by On Air, the basically add-on career, the career add-on, however you want to say that. And while it assigns a flight for me to enjoy, I will enjoy adult beverages on the flight. So, we're going from Cozumel to Asheville, North Carolina, in the Appalachian Mountains on the western part of the state. It's going to be a little about a three and a half hour flight, probably meh, three-ish hour cruise, so lots of honor stuff happening in the air. Um, and uh, it appears that three people in Cozumel have a sudden urgent need to get back to Asheville. I'm guessing these were some spring breakers who the parents just found out they're burning up the credit cards and told them you better get home immediately. Because whoever it is has money, they're willing to pay $5,000 a ticket to get home. And I'm cool with that. Money for the company and I get the hours. So you can see our straight line flight. We do have some weather coming in from the from the west. Uh, this has been causing me problems for since Wednesday. Um, we do play with live weather in um, the on-air company side and in the flight simulator. Everything is realistic. Um, I had a whole bunch of stuff that I intended to do here, including some base camp things, and uh, the weather has just kept it uh, from happening because, uh, and that, well, that's the reason it's challenging. So far, code the, um, the Yucatan Peninsula looks good, so we're not going to be too bad down here, but we do want to get in um, ahead of this if we can. It's going to be tight. So let's get started. So you see our straight line. Next is going to be our flight plan. So uh, this is at the extents of the range of the King Air. We're going to go from Cozumel straight across the Gulf of Mexico. Um, along here, we can obviously um, Cuba is an escape. If we have an engine problem, the King Air will do just fine on a single engine uh, for long enough to get to somewhere in Cuba. We go a little further north. We even have an FBO down here in the Keys. A little more, you got the whole Florida coast, and then we've got an FBO up here in, um, forget the name of it, but it's uh, near Eglin Air Force Base, uh, and, you know, Destin and Fort Walton Beach, all that kind of stuff. After that, we're on dry land, doesn't really matter. Uh, our alternate will be Charlotte. I'm doing an, an alternate to the east, not only because the Appalachians are heavier to the west, uh, but if the weather's coming this way, that'll give me what should be clear if it's, you know, starts getting marginal at Asheville. Asheville is in the mountains, and I have done that approach exactly once. And it has some, because of the mountains and hills around it, it is, um, it is a, an approach to pay attention to. Uh, not as bad as Aspen, but it, it has, there's some restrictions. All right, so there's the flight plan. Uh, you can see we have our three passengers. Uh, we don't have any cargo. It's just them and their, uh duffel bags uh, let's see we're gonna be doing it this at 27,000 feet we're doing max speed they're in a hurry and there is actually a time limit on the on-air job um, it's not it's it's not that tight but hey it's all part of the it's all part of the, the game right so let's uh, there's a the flight plan um, I'm gonna move this up so that I can see my checklist while we're in sim Make sure that's reset to before start go then uh, we go into here. Uh, that's not helpful. That's the job screen. Okay, I've already loaded the flight plan into the sim, so it's ready to go. We're going from Cozumel. That's Asheville up there. You know, I think it'll highlight. We're gonna go ahead and let that start to get loaded. And we need to go into on air and use the aircraft. MMCZ is Cozumel. There we go. So we're gonna go ahead and pick that one. And we are gonna do all sorts of on air stuff while in cruise. We've got three hour cruise. Three hour cruise. Again, not worried about copyright strikes. My singing sucks. But from here, we're taking our three uh, executives. That's with air quotes. And a whole lot of 19-year-old uh, executives. And we need to load. I didn't look at it. How much fuel? Where is it? Oh, it's up here. Block fuel is 3384. Fuel. Uh, no cargo, so weight and balance will be simple. Tell them to sit down in the forward seats and be happy about it. Uh, we don't need to bring any company people with us. There's nobody there. All the weights look good. Uh, destination, this should have been... Not that it really matters for this, but there. 
That is our alternate. Loaded good. Is on the apron. Uh, why don't we start this flight around? Uh, what do we think? Do we want to leave? Uh, these guys wouldn't have gotten up early. Would have been the afternoon. You know, ready to go in the afternoon. They didn't get back. Let's say we leave at like one. So that's uh, 19. Uh, uh, 13 is minus 6, right? Yeah. Okay, let's let that load. Uh, this is Sim Update 12, and it does have the new turbulence model. Uh, I did a flight earlier, and you'll see that as soon as I have time to edit it, it was earlier today. And the default apparently was low, which is not realistic. Um, so I, now that I understand that, I went and put it on realistic. I thought the default would be realistic, but no, it was low. So we'll be flying with realistic turbulence this time. Other than that, as far as the changes in SU-12, they say a performance optimization. I saw a few frames, nothing serious. We'll see if we see that again this time. Uh, everything is green. Everything that's supposed to be here is here. They are loaded. Yeah, it's yellow, so we have like a day. Yeah, so like I said, it's not a real hurry, but you know. So let's go ahead and uh, get this into the sim. Not much wind. Uh, Navigraph charge. We'll deal with that in a second. Here, we need you to load everything. Quickly, if possible, please. There we go. Cozumel Island. Fantasy Island. The plane. Okay, tracking is done. Minimize. And in the charts, yes, please load the flight plan. Oh, really? Okay, that is, those are the two airports at least. Uh, we are doing high FR. We can hide that. The airport diagram. Uh, Addis is 127.8. Uh, wind was from the south, so we're probably taking off on 2-3. It'll either be 2-3 or, what is that? I don't know, 1-2, uh, it has to be, because that's three. That's 30, so. 30 minus 18. Uh, and what is the airport? You, go away. 118, that's what I really needed. Now, on the last flight, and you should enjoy that once I get it uploaded, um, so I use the Logitech multi-panel to handle all my autopilot things. I was doing a procedure turn on an instrument approach, and Microsoft Flight Simulator, like, froze. The multi-panel went dark. <laughs> and I'm like, what? What? This is like a procedure... I had to manually do the procedure turn because even the new... Working title 750 whatever changes plus the set PMS 750 don't do procedure. They don't, you know, if there's a procedure turn in the approach, they don't do it. They just turn where they want to. So I had to manual. I was going to manually do the procedure turn, and I did. But right in the middle of, you know, it was did a parallel. When I started doing the 180 back, well, 200 and whatever 35 degrees back, um, right then it froze. <laughs> so then I had to use all the normal buttons and knobs, and it made me realize I've gotten really. Um, dependent on the multi-panel. Doesn't mean I won't still be, but I, I, it, it, it landing went, it went good. It, it went fine, but hey, if you want to see a hardware failure in the middle of an uh, instrument approach, uh, look for... Uh, it'll be called hardware failure something in the... It, it was uh, from uh, Mississippi to Alabama. It was like 87I to 79J. They were, you know, regional airports. Uh, but anywho... So from here, uh, we're going to be taking... So this is like some sort of general aviation thing here. We're take here, straight out, and then down, I think, is the way we're going to go. But we'll see what they assign me. Anyway, let's get... Uh, now that we've seen all that, we just need you to... It was uh, 118. 127, 8 on Addis. Okay. If we remember that long enough, we will tell him to take a chill pill. Because if we have ground services, we are going to need to be pushed back because he's in the way. 
So let's have him... Okay, he's already off for now, so we'll just leave that there so I don't forget. All of that is set. What have I forgotten before we start our pre-flight? I don't think anything, so let's just turn that on. We have our maps. We have everything else loaded, so let's just do this. Everything over here is off auto, main, off. That's all good. Parking brake is set. Everything here is off. Uh, all right, so next trim is set for takeoff. Flaps are up. Bottles are back. RPMs to full. Uh, fuel condition is cut off. Oxygen on. Rudder and aileron are neutral. Rudder boost. Electric trim. Okay, bleed errors to enviro off. And all of the rest of that is off. Radar should be off or standby. It is off. Oxygen is full. We're all good there. Okay, so that gets us ready for battery. Since we're doing a pushback, we aren't going to start right away. We're going to do battery, beacon, and then uh, master power. Wait for our stuff to come up. There we go. We are going to... Yeah, of course, I've already forgotten. That's why we have this here. 127.8. Cozumel Airport Information Whiskey 1600 Zulu. Wind 182 at 6. Visibility, 8. Sky condition, 2,600 feet. Scattered few clouds at 5,000 feet. Temperature, 2 niner. Dew point, 1 zero. Altimeter, 2 niner decimal niner 2. Visual runway, 2 tree in use. Landing and departing runway, 1 2. VFR aircraft, say direction of flight. All aircraft read back halt short instructions. Advise controller on initial contact, you have whiskey. Okay. Enough of that. So, uh, go ahead and let him do clearance now. We need our clearance before we can do pushback, if they have it here. Have it. We'll tell him, since we have our... We have whiskey, information whiskey. We'll get it. Cozumel Tower Barley, 01 IFR to Asheville, ready to copy. Barley 01 is cleared to Asheville Airport as filed. Take off runway 12 climb and maintain oh. 11,000 feet. Okay. Departure frequency is 124.2 squawk 4425. 4425. Barley 01 cleared to Asheville Airport as filed. Take off runway 12 climb and maintain 11,000 feet. Departure on 124.2 squawk 4425. Barley 01 readback is correct. We're on. Ground on 118.0 when ready to taxi. Good day. So as expected, we're doing runway 1-2. Oh, that's going to keep coming back as it go away. Which is 118. Set that. And, oh, no. Okay, so this is the updated version of the Black Square King Air. It has that. So you guys get to see which buttons I'm pushing instead of it being down here. And I'm just using the Logitech multi-panel. But anyway. So we're going to be using heading mode. And our heading is going to be 118, the runway heading. We will bug that. Whoa, too far. There we go. And then we're going to be using IAS mode for the climb, which we always do in the king air. I do. And then we're going to set that for 140, which is best rate. There, that's set. So the autopilot is all set up. Let's make sure our GPS is good. Uh, doing all this before we start the engines, right? You know, what we can also do is ground services quest pushback. Cozumel ground barley zero and we want to be pushed back pushback. to the right. Barley zero one pushback request accepted. Cozumel ground barley yeah. zero one requesting pushback tug to steer the aircraft to the right. Okay. Barley zero one, your request has been transmitted to the operator. I'll puck. And yes. Come on, Snaker, Bowie, Cully. Or sync that all matches up. We're good with the flight plan. Yes. Oh, I didn't. Okay, we'll worry about that later. All right. So while he's doing that, we can check a few things. Uh, 
fire. Okay, all fire indications are good. Oh, uh, again. I guess it's as far back as we're gonna get that, so. Cozumel ground barley zero one requesting the end of pushback. A building barley behind zero one request to end pushback received. Okay, so we are ready for start. Uh, beacon is on. Yes, just need to get him out of the way. Uh, we've got our GPS set up. We have our autopilot totally set up. Uh, let's see, we have gyro. Well, that won't be anything until we have a vacuum system. Out of myself. All right. Quick little. All right. So, that in mind, their prop. Here's another change with the new updated Black Square King Air. They changed the uh, startup checklist. Instead of it just being at 12%, it's stable above 12. So there. Your flight will be monitored until you land and shut down. Adding the, the fuel. In the previous checklist, it was just uh, above 12%. Now they say stable at 12. ITT is good. Oil pressure is good. That's a good start on two. Need to get our generator. Oh. Going. Load on the generator is good. I idle. Okay. That's looking good. So now let's go ahead and clear prop. Same thing as we're going to wait till it's steady above 12, which is there. Add fuel. Cozumel ground barley and now your ITT ready to taxi um, doesn't go near as high as it was before, so that fixes that problem. And oil pressure's good. That's a good start on one. Start her off. Taxiing hold short runway one two using taxiway barley zero one. Let's get the. Generator. Check. Both gens have a load. Battery's coming down. That all looks great. Alright. So now let's start getting some systems going. Inverters. Alright. There we, go. we can do environmentals. We do have people in the back. We don't need that. Aft blower would be good. Cabin master on. Coffee will be off. We don't need that. That's all. Everybody looks happy, or that will be happy. And over here we have vacuum. No, we don't have... Oh, you know why? It's right there. That's why we check these things. Gotta turn on the bleeder. There we go. Now we got pneumatic pressure. All right, all better. I think I've been calling that hydraulics. That's out of a weird habit. Um, but anyway. Uh, time for checklist. All right. Uh, we set that on when we did all that. Now it's before taxi. Uh, we already tested the enunciators. Mm, and I do a truncated set of checklists. I do have failures on in both the uh, King Air and in uh, the Sim, so I'm really trying to set those bleed air, pneumatic. Uh, did the temp, gyro, suction, inverters, CDI. I didn't need to check power. And we're not expecting weather yet. Master power remote. Okay, so a few things left to check, which is... Yes, we have a AC power. And our gyro is slaved. And aligned. So that is the before taxi. Next will be before takeoff, which is a really quick run-up. He decided to stay in the way. This is as far as he could push me back. It's, um, you know... 
It's funeral. Props gotta eat, right? Okay, and this is new. And then, um... There. Go nuts. And I have much to learn about the 530. Before, it's always been slaved together. So you didn't really do anything with it, I just used it for additional information. But now, it's its its own. It's truly a nav too. Um, and I've got some work to do. All those things are on. Okay, we, um... It's... Hazy? I don't know. We'll put, we'll put the nav lights on it. Won't hurt anybody. I mean, how much the light bulbs cost anyway? Although it is aviation light bulbs. All right, uh, all circuit breakers are in. Pedostatic source is set. Fuel is balanced, and as expected, those are all in. I don't think we're gonna care, but let's set that to there. All right, altimeter is set. Engines are nominal. GPS is set. Autopilot is set. All systems green. Electronics. Ugh, electrics. All good. Battery is not discharging. That is it. We're ready to go. He's already gotten our taxi clearance way before I was ready, but... Dude's in a hurry. You know? Okay, man, we're on company time, boss. So we're out of here. Now they also changed something about the uh, the idle speed in the King area with this update, so it may take a little getting used to. There's still no beta range. Oh, before we go to the hold line, let's do our run up here. Parking brake. Hopefully he won't request too early. There we go. Parking brake is on. Uh, and we need to go... Okay, both autumn, uh, auto feather lights are lit. There we go. Now the other one. That's good. did that test uh, come on left engine is not coming up to there. that's why we do this so we've got even torque what's its hey Test the prop governors. Yeah, I'm not getting even power out of the. Uh oh. Now are we? Yeah, I'd left the. Uh, I'd left number two in high idle. That's why. Okay, so we're good. Back to idle. Auto feather lights are out. Auto feather is to norm. We are now. Our run up is complete. And we look down here. Annunciators are clear. Annunciators are clear. No warnings. Parking brake is off. Let's set up. Lights. Everything but the landing lights are on. Guess I could have turned a little bit there in case somebody came up behind me, but I didn't hear anybody on the radio saying they were doing anything. So.
Bones. Cozumel Tower Barley 01 at runway 12 ready for departure IFR to Asheville. Barley 01 altimeter 29 decimal 9 21182 at 6. Cleared for takeoff runway 12. Cleared for takeoff runway 12 Barley 01. Okay, checking, verifying this is the right one way. Since we get to the runway. Uh, another thing they fixed in this update with the King Air is now you can push the heading bug and uh, it'll set the your, the heading dial and now it will set to your current uh, heading before you had to like manually turn it. Okay, verify with the runway numbers and the direction we are turned that this is the correct one ray. Runway. Okay. Uh, I'll tell her, let's check everything. Uh, the big four. Lights are on. Flaps are set to approach. Trim is set. Auto feather is on. We are good to go. One last check to make sure engines are even and green. Even power, even prop RPM. We're out of here. Heavy, so 110 for rotate. Positive rate, gear up. Time locked. Right, 125, flaps up. Let's trim. Army 01, contact Cancun, departure on 124 decimal 2. Good day. Back to 90% for the climb. One, two, four, decimal two for Barley zero one. Cancun departure Barley zero one is passing 1,100 feet, climbing 11,000 feet. Barley zero one, Cancun departure altimeter two nine or decimal nine or two. Continue as planned. All right. Heading in nav. I mean, uh, AP's going to nav mode. Let it take over. So we can monitor the engine for the climb. There we go. 90%. All right. After takeoff checklist. High idle. 100%. Oh, nah, flaps. Yes. All done. Climb. Power levels 90% in one. ITT less than 785. Yes. Uh, props full. Props sync on. Uh, yaw damper on. Okay, that is the climb checklist. Next is 10K. Okay. Autopilot is respecting the IIS speed. We are in climb. We are level. It is on nav path. All right. You know what I think I forgot is I need to pull the nav log. This is a long flight and we are at the edge, page four here, of uh, the King Air's range. Uh, what did we load? We loaded 3384. Next real check is really going to be probably Rotji. Engines look good. Go ahead and put this on standby. Yeah. Uh, oh, well. I told them, but I forgot to put the light on just so they don't think they can get up now. Pretty smooth. 
Turn the coffee on. Easy four oh four. Good day. Okay, so this will be our first check here. One two five decimal two for Barley zero one. Merida Center Barley zero one is passing eight thousand four hundred feet, climbing eleven thousand feet. Barley zero one Merida Center altimeter two nine or decimal nine or two continue to CZ four oh four as planned. So that's pretty clean takeoff and climb so far. Uh, we're nearing 10,000. Let's go ahead and do the quick checks for that. They're simple. Uh, there they are. Where'd they go? There. Uh, lights as required. We no longer need our landing lights. Cabin pressure adjust for transition. We're going at 27,000 feet. And it is set for... There, 27.5. All right. So while we're climbing, another thing we can do is I can say just from roughly panning around that at least Sim Update 12 has not made performance worth. It's nice and worse. It is now ni it's nice and smooth. So let's pull up the Nvidia thing. Uh, GPU is running about 70 per 80. Zero. Climb and maintain flight level two one zero barley zero. Hey, now you can see I switched IAS. Uh, all right, and we're getting 53, 54, 55. There is a slight performance increase, I think. Yeah, that's I usually was in the 40, 45 range. Granted, there's not a whole lot here, it's just the ocean. Well, I guess there's stuff over there, but so maybe there is a slight performance increase, at least for me. Your mileage may vary. I'm uh, if you need to see my System specs, all of them are listed in the description, but I'm not running any any of the super killer graphics card. I'm running a card from like 20, whatever, 18, but it is a good one. The 1080 series is still, I think, one of the best bang for buck graphics cards that is, was ever developed. Climb and maintain flight level 250 American 1723. Our next check will be at 18,000, flight level 18, 180, flight level 180. I'll say it six different ways if it makes everybody happy. Uh, let's see, we have done all our checks so far. We can do system checks. Uh, vacuum, pneumatics, oxygen. I promise I will quit calling them hydraulics. Don't know where I got that from. Uh, everything here is fine. That all looks great. Engines are a little more power. Tiny bit, tiny bit, tiny bit. There we go. Green, green, green. We're on course. Autopilot is doing its stuff. Alaska 441 climb and maintain 16,000. Yeah, this little update to the King Air. Uh, this has been the most. Oh. Having every time, you know, to go down here, because you had to hit, you have to use the, mic the well, when you want to set it, use this IAS button. Uh, to just turn it back on, I can use the Bravo Throttle IAS. But on the ground, it has an odd behavior. You hit IAS and it'll put it to your current speed, which on the ground is zero. So you have to use the mechanical button. Having it up here, not only that, but you guys can see how my whole autopilot is set. My yaw damper's on, I'm on nav mode, IAS, the autopilot is on, and I have the, because I have passengers, I ha I'm on the half bank. This at 90. And as we near 18,000, we're already, huh, huh, won't have to do anything at 18, we're already at standard pressure. Only thing we'll do is, we'll move it to a cruise climb at, uh, at 18,000, which is simply moving IAS to 160. And then we will let the passengers touch their bags and things. Which for spring breakers might mean something completely different. So we're going to go to a cruise climb setting. Moving a little faster forward, not as quick up. We're in no hurry. Okay. 
At this point, throttles are full forward, so to maintain 90% torque, I'm starting to pull back on the RPM levers, the prop levers. You can hear that. As the added benefit of, uh, it'll slowly make the engines a little quieter for the, uh, three gentlemen, in air quotes, in the back. Air Transat 9 or 3, 8 heavy contact Cancun approach on 124.7. Good day. But they are gentlemen because they paid me $5,000 a pop to go to Asheville. Going to 124.7 Air Transat 9 or 3, 8 heavy. You know, I can do the math to see what this flight's going to... Since I'm flying it, I have no pilot costs. And my fuel costs for this flight are probably going to be like... I don't know, I can actually pull... I got a spreadsheet for that. It's a... Uh, West Jet 2177 flight maintain flight level 200. Yeah, like 1,200 bucks. So, easy money. Okay, got an altitude alert. Means we're almost there. We can turn that off. No flashy BP. Since we're going to, to flight level 270, I will eventually have... I won't be able to pull back. In fact, we're really close now. Once the prop RPMs get to 1500, I got to stop pulling back. So we'd, we climb at whatever speed we climb at. 1450 is really the limit, but 1500 is where I stop. And we're just about there. Look at it straight on so I can be sure. So there we are. There's no more engine stuff to do. Just maintain the climb. We already did our FL uh, flight level 180 checks. After this, it's going to be cruise. And we are... I did the flight plan, plan for fast cruise. We will have to watch the nav log and see how, um, how that goes. We may have to go to something a little more efficient. Oh, and I don't have my wind up here. I wanted that. Oh, we got four hours to... Well, that's because we're still at climb speed. That will come up. Mm, why don't we... Aeromexico flight niner, one climb and maintain flight level 180. Like, especially in cruise, I like having the wind. Right, wind, speed, and direction. Thank you. Uh, we'll have a very tiny tailwind. So we're going to go with fast cruise for now. We are coming up on our first nav check also. Nav log, fuel check, whatever you want to call it. Climb and maintain flight level 320, Aeromexico 591. Aeromexico 591, climb and maintain flight level 350. Climb and maintain flight level 350, Aeromexico 591. We'll wait till the wings cross the waypoint. Wings across the waypoint. We'll call that made. What do we got here? What is that? 350, so 700. 2400. 3100. Okay, and how much are we... Sp oh, where did my mouse will just... That's better. Yeah, we're supposed to have... Where'd it go? Here. Okay, so we're ahead of the game so far. The 
Like we have an extra 100 pounds so far. And top of climb wasn't supposed to be till well, right about then. Yeah, like three, three minutes. Okay. American two two zero seven climb and maintain flight level two zero zero. So now we'll get our. Once we get to two seven zero. Let's make sure that we are. Maintain flight level two zero zero American two two seven five. We're supposed to have about eighty two fifty cabin altitude. Level it's still climbing, but it is almost at seven. We still got another thousand feet to go, so. And if we wanted it to go faster, you can move the rate up, but it's more comfortable for passengers if it slowly comes up, as long as it doesn't come up too slow so that they're. Uh, so that your difference becomes an issue, right? So this is your differential pressure here. You don't want that in the red. Okay. Engines look great. Gosh, I mean it... I will say... Uh, I, I don't know if it's because we're just over water and there's not a lot of buildings and stuff like that. But it definitely feels smoother. On realistic turbulence, I mean, granted, we're... We're basically in the Caribbean, I mean, Gulf-ish. But, um, yeah, the turbulence wasn't awful. I mean, I had to kind of, you know, keep it on track with the flight director and trim it up, but it wasn't crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do a systems check real quick. American 172 tree contact Havana Center on 135 decimal one. Good day. Climb and maintain flight level tree. Six zero Valeris, six tree niner. No moisture up here. I'm not going to worry about pedo heat. I mean, it's obviously freezing. There's nothing up here. I'm trying to think of what else they said were the differences in the updated Black, uh, Black Square King Air. I mean, this is probably the biggest one. These changes come from the um, Sim Update 12. They updated the avionics, the working title stuff. But I will tell you, it still doesn't do procedure turns. Or at least I couldn't. It, it didn't show up in the approach, and it should have. So I had to manually fly that today. And I, I'm okay with that. I mean, would have been more okay with it if the Logitech multi-panel hadn't uh, uh, gone belly up in the middle of the procedure turn. If it hadn't froze the simulator for like 15 seconds, that would have been, that would have been better. And it's never done that before, so I don't know if there's some sort of weird thing between Sim Update 12 and uh, the multi-panel. Okay, so we also want to kind of check to make sure the ground speed were. Oh, see, this resets every time. No, wait, I didn't. Was I flying a King Air earlier? Yes, I was. Right, it wasn't the Cessna. Yeah, this resets every time, so that's kind of annoying. And see, before they were coupled, so you also got your distance, dis uh, desired track, track, and your estimated time for the whole thing. So now I have to kind of lose a field over here because I would have to enter that whole flight plan to get it to do it right, and yeah, no thanks. I don't know if there's a way to tell it, hey, just eat this one's flight plan. I just like the extra fields. <laughs> I wish there were. I wish there was one more. If there was just one more field, like right here or here or something. But I'm I'm whining a bit. 
There's just, I really don't have a lot to complain about in this aircraft. Climb and maintain flight level three. Flies wonderfully. The sounds are amazing. And if you like the way you like these videos and the way I'm doing it, this time especially, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow. Likes make the channel grow. Climb and maintain 15,000 feet, Tom Jet 6 Mike Heavy. And if there's something you think I could do better, put them in the comments. I have answered every single comment anybody who's has put on any of the videos I've ever done. And I believe I've taken almost uh, all the advice I've been given. This one, we're going to do a bunch of on-air stuff. I've gotten feedback that in some of the videos the music was a little loud. I think it was before I switched to OBS where I have more control over the volumes of things. Certainly over the quality of the audio. But uh, I think that's been fixed. If you don't think so, hey, that's what the comments are for. I need all the feedback I can get. I want to... One of my goals for the Friday Night Flights is to live stream these. But to get there, I need to get to where I'm happy with the production and that, obviously, my viewers are happy with the production. Because doing it live is going to be harder. Um, here, I can hit... If, if something goes weird, not inside the aircraft, but let's say... Like, well, I didn't do it earlier. Um, um, when the Logitech multi-panel went crazy, I, I went, I just worked through it. But I could, because it wasn't a live stream, I could have hit escape and, you know, unplugged it from the USB port and replugged it in to get it to come back. Instead, I treated it like a, an instrument failure and just said, okay, I don't get to use that piece of equipment anymore and move on. Um, but with, when you're recording, you have that, or something happens with the sound, or if I wanted to go and play with um, graphic settings or something right now, I could. Because I could edit it out later. With live stream, you don't get to do any of that. It's pretty stuff. Water, coastline. Maybe time for outside cam. American seven eight one flight level three six zero. American seven eight one Marina Center. Continue as planned. Uh, the cloud. This is how thumbnails are made. Also, I'm going to sell souvenir pictures to the uh, three guys in the back. Whether they want them or not. <laughs> We're done with that. Alright, so now the only thing really as far as logistics or planning left is to make sure that we stay on fuel and our next check is in three minutes. And I want to make that because I want to know that we're on fuel on our predictions. Um, one thing that helps with that is we're at 324 ground speed. We can check our... But the next check we're supposed to be at 322. That's this field right there. No, I didn't want that. Oh, stop. 322. And we're at 324. So our settings are matching what Simbrief estimated based on the winds aloft. So we should eat gas at about the same rate as it expects. Delta one niner niner six, you are six two miles northeast. So we'll watch at Rot G. And Rot G is next and it's in two minutes. Very busy over the Gulf today. A lot of arrivals. I mean, hey, it is Friday. Somebody's going into spring break next week, right? Descend and maintain 3,000 feet. Extreme. 
expect ILS one runway one two left approach. Not me. Uniform November transition clear to Charlie Uniform November Delta one nine or nine or six. Well, Monday's a work day. No spring break for barley. Need to see if there's an online E6B, so I could show you guys the difference between using the CX8 or the CX3 uh, digital flight computer and the E6B, which is a manual flight computer. There's some like I think I've said this before in other videos. There's some things where I like this the CX3 better for, and something I like the, the E6B is faster for me. Uh, if I want to calculate true airspeed when I don't, like the Cessna calculates pressure altitude for you in this in this version of the King Air, you don't get that. So you'd have to go through the multi-step process of calculating pressure altitude and then true airspeed. Um, with E6B, you have to enter all the same information, but you're doing it at the same time. You don't do one operation in the other. You literally set everything: your outside temperature, your uh, altitude, indicated altitude, and stuff and your indicated airspeed, you just set it all, and then there's on the, on the I think it's on the B-band, you just read at a certain point, um, you know, your indicated airspeed, and then it'll show you, here's your troop. And it's, so it's like super quick. And it's one operation, whereas the CX-3, you have to do one, and then the second one. If I can find an online digital E6B that I can show, then I'll show you the two operations and why I like one over the other. For some things I totally like, if I just needed to uh, calculate pressure altitude, then yeah, the CX-3 is faster. And easier. Just enter a bunch of, go to the, uh, I think it's the flight plan menu, uh, altitude, and pick out which altitude you're trying to, and you pick out pressure altitude if that's what you're trying to calculate. And then you just enter uh, indicated temperature, blah, blah, blah. And it'll tell you what your pressure altitude is. Why are we turning? Must have just been correcting. Been correcting for wind? Oh, a little bit. Nice tailwind. What have we come up to? Oh, oh 322. That's exactly... Oh, Rachi. Talking too much. Uh, 2400 here. Uh, what is that? 275. Climb and maintain 16,000 feet air cannon. 550. It's 24. It's 2950. Right where we're supposed to be. Oh, no. That's not it. Rachi. 2950. So. so then the next thing to do is see, are we increasing or decreasing? So back here, we were 125. Put plus. And here we are... Uh, 32 to 50 is 18, 118. So a little bit of a decrease. We need to keep an eye on it. We don't want to get behind the curve on this. Um, if we get, I mean, if, if it's uh, obviously it's coming down, we're going to have to go a little slower. So right now, what is our estimated time en route now? Two hours, 36 minutes. 30 to 8. Yeah. Wouldn't be upset if the wind kicked up a notch or two. But we are holding exactly the speed that it wanted us to. Yeah, 322. We're at 322. Now it's saying it's going to go up a little bit at Ux Xopi. Or you want to say that? Zopji. These are close together. I think I'm going to skip one so I can go make a drink. <laughs> I don't know. I might be back in three minutes. Be right back. The co pilot will uh, answer any questions if he could.
Alrighty. Anything exciting happen while I was gone? Not words you want to hear from your pilot, is it? Level 323. I think it told us 324, but there, there it is. 324 just in time. <laughs> really? Descend and maintain flight level 260 swoop Looking at what happened between the last two points, I'm guessing we may have to slow a bit. I mean, I've got 20 minutes of contingency fuel and a 45 minute reserve, but there's weather coming in. That's the reason the contingency fuel is there. Not so I can go really fast. All right, and we'll call that Zopchi. Oh, 24. Uh, let it waver a little bit so we can see where the average is. Uh, 250, so 500, 2900. That's what I'm going to call it anyway. And that puts us at uh, 1 to 60, 41, 141. Okay, so that's good. Now also, because those are analog uh, fuel measurements. And if I wanted to, another way, if you don't want to do the math, uh, you can go to the tracking screen. Oh, no. And it'll tell you that we really have 2882 to be exact. But, you know, what's 18 pounds between friends and we're, pa way pa we're past the waypoint. 2900 works because the errors are going to average out. You know, sometimes I'll be a little less, sometimes I'll be a little more, but it's not going to be enough. It's mainly monitoring... No, not that. Hello. There. This. Right, so it'll average out over time where sometimes I'll get a, a slightly low reading or a slightly high, but if it's consistently low, that's where I get worried. But with a hundred, more than a hundred pound buffer, I'm comfortable just, you know. Again, the trend. If the trend just keep kept going 125, 118, 108, and then the next one was like 90, then I would have had to say, okay, we got to slow down. Now I'm seeing that, okay, there's probably, it's just, you know, uh, statistical error or read error or whatever you want to call it. But the next one, next one's in two minutes. Okay, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna be reading every two minutes. How close are these waypoints? They're all very close. Oh my god. Yeah, we are doing. We, we are not doing all these freaking reading. They're all like super close together. Seven, four. 13, 38. That's the first one where it gives it any... Yeah, I'm not going to do all those readings. Okay. So. Right now, I'm, I'm happy with what I'm seeing. So, it's time to get some on-air stuff. To, you know, we got some company business to take care of, right? Climb and maintain flight level tree zero zero Air Canada Niner Tree Tree. Yes. Tree yes, we do. And maintain flight level tree six zero. Get some stuff out of the way here. And uh, next check is going to be descent. Just set that up. Now all I need is my on-air plane spreadsheet. Do not need anything else. All I need is my lamp, my remote control. If you've never seen the jerk, go watch it. All right, where's my on-air stuff? Here we go. So there's my job screen. And again, I normally do these on multiple screens, so forgive me for being a little slow doing it this way. We don't need tracking right now. Uh, this will be where we do... Well, first I need to bring up my aircraft screen, right? I need to pop this out. Well, not really. I guess we can just start from here. So we want to do status. Or... Really? I normally do this from the live operations screen, but I'm going to see... So the things we have to worry about is that has four, that needs to go to the shop like right now. It's at RDU. That's why it's there. Let's just get that taken care of. Manage. It's, I'm sorry if you didn't know I was talking about 
There's 4.5 hours left until it needs a 100 hour inspection. That's why I flew it back to RDU or the had an AI do it. So it could use our shop and get all taken care of. So let's send it to the workshop. Let the mechanics take care of it. So we are going to repair the airframe, both engines, and do the 100 hour inspection. And we're going to take these up to as high as they go. All three of them. Yes, thank you. I don't need you to tell me that. Okay, so that's basically bringing this up to the maximum it can get and doing the 100 hour all at the same time. So now we go here, change it to RFBO. We get a quote. Now this is for what, an ATR? There goes $1.5 million. <laughs> so pay and start the work. So, uh, anybody else in danger today? Yeah, this King Air to KEFK. Wow, he's going to have to fly straight here. We'll deal with that later. The King Airs are... Uh, this C-130, it is coming to RDU soon. Maybe. Yeah, after Marathon, yeah, it's coming here. So when it gets here, that'll go into the shop. This one is another AT. Wow, we're going to have three aircraft in the shop. How long is it going to take him to do this one? Two hours. Mm. I have six mechanics at this shop because we have a lot of aircraft and I don't want them down for significant time and mechanics aren't expensive. Don't tell them that. Freaking, they'll unionize or something. Or strike or demand pizza. I don't know. Uh, let's see. So that one. Anybody else? Yeah, they're getting close, but I'm going to hold up. This one can do two more. This one could do one more ticket before he needs, so his next one needs to get him to RDU. Okay, I think everything else is fine. This is us. Okay, so he's being operated on... <laughs> Surgery. Not, not a workshop, it's an, and it's an OR for airplanes. We're... We really train our mechanics. All right. So that means now. So now I switch to cargo capacity, payload. I want to work with my biggest aircraft first, as far as this. So the top three are flying. That one's not going to do anything. So it's this ATR here, and this one needs to go to RDU. So we will do manage work orders. Uh, it looks like I had... This is the one... I think I started this on the flight earlier today. Um, but it was a real short flight. It was like a 45-minute cruise. Or not even 45. It was like 30-minute cruise. I didn't have a lot of time. Uh, yeah, it looks like I've gotten all the way down to here. But look, uh, there, there. Who's on this? I got one flight attendant. This is an ATR, so we can only have one. Well, because I have, I have it configured with only 24 seats. There you go. And so far, that seemed to work out. The C-130, I may go to 36 seats. We'll have to I'll watch it for another couple of days. American Flight 06 uh, so we're here. We have no payloads here, right? I, I don't, we have no payloads. So KBCT to KHST. Let's go here. We need... Oh, this is where the second screen becomes so much nicer. Uh, but... You will, you will bask in my pain. KBCTKHST. First, see if there's... KHST. And, oh, I forgot that. Which aircraft is this? Uh, N71. But, yeah, but we're... Uh, KHST. Oh, that looks right. Survey says... No, there's nothing there. Okay, so that's probably as far as I got. Uh, so let's just go to... Okay, and by then, we've emptied ourselves. That sounds so wrong. We emptied ourselves all over the place. KHST... Here, we're just going to go from, see what we find. How many hours we got on us right now? 6.3, okay. 
And this one needs to end up at RDU. Right? Mm. That'd be nice if we had some of that information here. I guess I could have written it down, but in 71. I need to check my apologies. I'm just worried that I'm... In 71... In 71, where are you? Yeah, this needs to end up at RDU. Oh, that doesn't help. Back. So we need to start thinking that direction. After this leg. KHST. It's so much faster we're using a multiple multiple screens, but I don't know. I I don't know how I would record that to make it any less troublesome using anything. I mean, I could put it over on the other screen, then I could set up two different sources, but I'd have to flip back and forth in OBS. So I don't know how that's really going to help anybody. Let's start. Fifteen nine fifty. Everybody is playing. Tells database responses are slow. MSLP. I don't remember where that is. Oh, I turn off that. Uh, Honduras. That's below. That's out of our. That's Central America, not North America. We can't take that one. KMDQ. Two. 19, 9, 31, 6, 47. That should be fine. All cargo. Okay. Let's take that. It looks like... Uh, let's do KDCU first. Now we want to find out if there's other stuff we could load onto this flight. So KH just to KDCU. Ah, the answer is no. All right, so the other one is for KMDQ. Let's see if there's anything from KHD, KHST to KMDQ. How much space was left on there? A lot. So yeah, we'd like to find something. 13,000 would do it. Oh my god, but it's three... And we need to end up at RDU. How long are we in now? 9.3? Um... Because that's really going to be 9.3, 10.3, 11.3, and then getting straight to RDU probably isn't going to happen. I'm going to. Um, that's a lot of money to walk away from, though. 16, 13,638. We have exactly that to give. That's money to walk away from. I don't want the plane to get stuck somewhere and have to pay somebody else to do this, though. Well, there's a way to avoid that. If nothing else, I can just fly direct. Or I'll go fly it. I don't know. That's a lot of money to walk away from, so no. We're going to take it. I mean... In reality... Because it adds that to the other... The flight we were already doing to... KHS... Wherever. Where were we doing it to? Oh, no. This is... Oh, that's not so bad. Never mind. This is... Go from here. Where, where's, where's, yeah, from Homestead to Cop. To KB, they all go here. Oh, that's not as bad. Because then we're closer to RDU, so that's not as long a flight. Oh, no, we're definitely taking this. Did I, did I miss the math? I don't think so. 13,638. Shorter flight. Everything looks good. Let's find out if I did it wrong. Right? Because that's what everybody wants to see. When Barley screws up. So, oh no, that's going to show up back here. That's where this needs to go away. Here's something interesting to watch. So you have two ways to do this. Either delete the leg, 
Okay, I'll just show you how it works because it's painful. So now we added this, and we now have to go to a different place, right? Uh, it's going to be a mess to unscramble, so I'm not going to do it. But you add this. This leg now no longer doesn't know about that. So you have to go and you have to show it. So you tell it to show all cargo. Come on. And then you have to go through and pick out. Okay. And the best way to do it is to go to legs. And I'll show you this on a later flight where it makes more sense. And you have to figure out which ones are going where and make sure that you load them at the right places. Oh, it's a disaster. So the easier thing to do, unless you've already planned out like 16 legs or something, is to just say, you know what? We'll eventually do that one. We have to do KHC to KDCDU. We're going to add that leg on, but we now need to go to those other two places, the ones that are here, and I should have written down. So we're looking for that one. No, one at three. Yeah, so not that one. That one. There we go. These three places. So, we need to go from KHD to KOPF to KPBI. So... We're going to KDCU because that was next. Where is KDCU? But we picked this other stuff up. KDCU is up near KMDQ, so it's before that. Yeah, we delete this. Complicated. It's probably just the way my mind works. You guys probably just see this and like immediately visualize. Oh, this is what I gotta do. Yeah, not so much me. So case, so we don't want to go to KDCU. From KHST, we want to go to Kopf. There's a load waiting there for us, right? We picked up everything here. We need to refresh, make sure I didn't leave something. Okay, we go to Kopf, and there's a load waiting for us. And that's not good news. How do we... How are we not overweight here? Oh, one. We don't need this much fuel, but... That's not it. And at cop... We're not going that far. Oh, this could be... Starting to get worried. I might be undoing all of this. But anyway, let's load this. I had to go to KMDQ. Am I going to be overweight already? Oh, but I'm getting rid of some weight somewhere, right? <laughs> somewhere? No, I'm not. Uh, but we only need 215. Is that better? No. We are overweight by like six... What did I do? Might have to delete all of this. We're already overweight. I'm not getting rid of that. Well, here we're not really going to KMDQ, but that's not the problem. Oh, we are getting weighted. We're, we're getting rid of... Wait, some... Right? Yes. We're getting rid of all of this. Okay. So Kopf isn't going to KMDQ. Kopf is going to... KPBI. But it should have already... Wait, but where we get... How do we... Oh no, this isn't going to work. Yes, I blew it. Yay, you got to watch Barley mess up, see? Spirit Wings 544 yeah, climb Flight level 23,000 pounds here. We get here. We only have a thousand pounds remaining. That should have been. Climb and maintain flight level 350 spirit wings 544. Barley 01 contact Houston Center on one tree for decimal minor. Okay, so yeah, I blew that. Some of those complex ones can get like that hairy, but that's why we're doing that. Midia, let's just go ahead and. Center Barley zero one flight level two seven zero. Barley zero one Houston Center, continue to MYDI. Three twenty seven. We are at three twenty six. That is acceptable. Fuel wise, we are three hundred plus twenty four. That's twenty seven hundred. Still good. Okay, why is it? It's ignoring me. Okay. So that's uh, 
155, 155. Oh, yeah, we're staying, we're staying in the realm of good things. All good. Okay, airplane, you're doing great. Check systems and stuff. While I go unscrew the mess that I just made. I think that's why you guys watch my videos is to see what Barley screws up next. I'm okay with that. And I've only had two drinks so far. Wait until the end of the flight. All right, so we're all good here. All right, co-pilot, your controls. All right. So yeah, there's no way. So how did I, how did I not see that? That's more interest. That's more of interest. So we did every, so here we had two cargo for KHT. Get to KHST, that's all gone. So it's just what we picked up here. We had a thousand remaining. Oh, and then we wanted to add on some more crap. Yeah, I should have looked at that. I missed it. And they added this in the most recent on-air update. So if you haven't played recently, that's nice. Because normally I had, you know, you had to kind of have a calculator somewhere to see exactly what you had. So I, I'm glad they added this. They did it on both, payload and total weight. So good on them. Yay, good update. But yeah, I'm going to have to go ahead and uh, ditch that cargo before it penalizes me because I can't take it. I don't know how I missed it, but bye. Now, that means I need to delete this. And we'll just go ahead and delete this to make sure it's not holding on to something that I'm missing. Alright, so we're at KHST. There are no payloads at KHST. And then the way we got ourselves here is we had done a query that did KHST SD to KMDQ. Why? Because if we go to K KHST, we have these. We have 909... Okay, it was. <laughs> I haven't even put the fuel in yet. Uh, KHST... And we decided to go to KMDQ first. One, two, four, decimal, seven, bar and lead, zero, that's 220. Miami there we go. Barbie There's our 1,200 pounds is all we have remaining. Chasing 1,200 pounds it is a fool's errand, and I just did it, so, yeah. Party fool. My microphone, it's in my face. I need to see. Okay, so, yeah, I shouldn't have gone chasing after the, that poundage. There was no reason. I think, uh, yeah. So now we also need to go to KDCU, right? When we go here... We've gotten rid of some stuff, so KHST to KM... whatever it was. KDCU. I prefer the straightforward... <laughs> uh, workload, or work orders better, but... Sometimes, this makes a little extra money if you do it right, but if it takes this much extra time, sometimes it's not worth it. MDQ to KDCU. Do we, we shouldn't have a payload... yet, but let's go... KH, I think this is where I got where I got upside down. KHST to KDCU. We have 7,000 pounds here. KHST, a DCU, not the other one. We hadn't unloaded anything yet. Here we've unloaded something and there's nothing there for us to pick up. Yay. Okay, so there's not going to be anything there for us to pick up. So we'll just go to KDCU next, and we are at 9.3 hours. We need to start working ourselves to RDU, because this plane needs to get serviced. So, we can look, KDCU to KRDU. Chances of there being a, a good load here are next to none, but we'll ask. And, of course. So then what I do is say, okay, we want to get to RDU, right? Well, then just tell it that. Okay, are you? And then two, we're going to be coming from the south. We're coming from Florida, right? We're coming from... Oh, let's just get this started. We're coming from KDCU. So whenever this finishes... Any time it feels like. Oh, Saturday night every, or Friday night, everybody's playing. Uh, we put KDCU up here and it will center. Oh, not Florida. That's Illinois. Oh, Tennessee. Oh, there's a Decatur in Tennessee. I didn't know that. Uh, so we're here. And we need to get here, so we're looking for anything really between like 0, 060 and 0, 090, I think. So then, we've got everything that came through from best pay to worst. 
or an ATR. There's not a whole lot of great stuff, but we can take more than one. And then we're going to organize it by heading. Uh, we already picked out what heading we wanted, which is 060 through, and then we can look at it, right? So we'll start here. Wow, I was pretty close. Because we're... Oh, we're here, though, so we need it shorter. Let's, uh... Yeah, not as close as I was thinking. So, yeah, we need to be... Let's try here. A little higher. Getting closer. Because we're short on time, it has to be pretty darn close. A little shorter would be better. There, that looks... Let's see if we're close to where we... A little backtracking, but we've got... Four hours to give. We can do that. Is it a good ping? Is there more than one? No. All the bad answers. But along this line, is there... Uh, well, we're really going to be pushed... Uh, that one... So that's all cargo and that one, right? That one... We can pick up that one... And then we can pick up... Well, that one's further away. It would be... Twenty-five, five thousand, seventy-five hundred. So the weight's not an issue. Ninety-seven is going to be off axis, but still doable. Oh my God, that's going to. But it's only about an hour and a half flight from there. Okay, we're going to pick up a bunch of stuff. I didn't really want to do this on a recording, but it happens. So let's start with the first one we liked, which was not that. This one. Not exactly. So we're here. I really want something like this, but you have to go all the way back to Oklahoma. And we're at nine hours. And then we'd have to find a job to get us there, or that's a waste. That's closer. So we could... So yeah, that's everything from this side. Really. And the range was more like... Let's say we want maximum 500. Let's narrow this down a little bit. Check on the aeroplane. All good. Greens. No concerns. So now let's go check our 60 through 90 area. And the best job is there. That's 500? Wow, that's too f yeah. That's about right. Okay. 27,000. I'd do that just to make sure we got home, because that's not bad. Yeah. The weight is 8,200. Not a concern. Let's take that one. I guess I should have... A little fast, fast with the clicking. I think it was KBCM. Not that... It was like KBCM or something like that. I don't... Okay, so let's organize it by RDU, which will be a lot of things. Wasn't that... Was this it? Oh, there it is. KCBM. Okay. I want to make sure. Is it that one? Yes, it is that one. KCBM. That's where we got to get to. So, just so we don't forget it. No. There, that's stored. That's where we're, we're pretty sure we're going.
I promise, I normally do work orders much faster than this. This is just turning into kind of a nightmare scenario. So now I want to try to make some money getting to KCBM. See you. Spirit Wings 544 traffic is 12 o'clock, 2 miles, at flight level 360 Airbus. Report Trying to listen to the radio and do this is... Going to one tree, two decimal Just making sure they're not telling me something I really need to pay attention. So KDCU, KCBM. And not having it on a second screen is totally slowing me down. Let's keep going back and forth. But... Okay, so there is no, there are no jobs to go to take care of that, so... Let's just put... Are there any jobs we can stack with this? Because we're going to KRDU. Plane must get maintenance. This must get surgery. Surgery. Okay, so there's an extra 7,700 pounds we could tack on there. We have it to give. KDCU. Oh, we're gonna go to the next ones. KBCM. We have the weight to give. Let's just make sure KCBM. Yes, to KRDU. Those are correct. Let's take it. Tack that on there. A little extra money. We're at 10.1 hours, and by the time we get to KRDU, we will be... At 12 hours, that is perfect. We're going to rest the crew when we get there. We need to set the fuel for 79. Perfect. Now, the next thing we can do... I'm not going to do a ton of this on this, because I think we got a lot of... Is, um... Is uh, tanker fuel. And this can get you upside down, so you have to be really careful. Uh, now, there's an episode. I think it's episode 2 or 3 where I screw it up. It was a really popular episode. Again, I think you guys just wat like watching me mess up. It happens. A lot. So now, if we're gonna tanker, let's figure out where fuel's exp You know, is, is the fuel at the next one? That's expensive. That's not. So we only want to tanker for the next two, because that's, that's just above wholesale. There's no reason to tanker any further than that and risk. So here, we need 257 gallons. Okay, well that math is pretty easy. Really? Well, 500 plus 14. There we go. That takes care of this one. So this flight, they won't need to tanker at all. Then they get here, they buy the cheap fuel. What's the next one that? That's not bad, no reason to tanker. 482. Good prices. That's not. Well, let's buy a little extra here. How bad is it here? Terrible. Well, if we can tanker through these, which is 79, 59, so 80, 60, 140. That'll put us at 360. The next one's the cheap one. So no, we just want. This one's the cheap one. We want this one plus this one. 60 plus 80, so we want 140 here. There we go. So that's that saves us some money on gas, because we don't need extra going into here. But we get into here, and we're at RDU. We're going to rest the crew when we get there. Let's make sure we have two pilots. How much passengers, passengers, passengers? We are doing any passengers, but... We're not going to leave... We, you know what? We could leave Miss Fink at MTM. We don't need her. There you go. We don't need her. Sorry, Miss Fink. Or no, it wasn't Miss Fink. We, we do need her. She's a pilot. It was... I guess... It, was it Amelia Grant or Sebastian? Whoever it was, we don't need them. This flight. We do need them. We need all of our flight attendants. All of our employees are valuable. Okay, so that's everything. Let's go ahead and activate that one. Alright, so 
Not sure exactly how long that took us, but that was the longest work order I've done in a long time. Uh, I mean, it was exactly half a half a bourbon, however long that is. Check the plane. Engines. Electrics. Fuel balance. Have we even gotten out of auxiliary yet? The math gets easier when we're out of auxiliary. Almost. Probably the next fuel check, which is... In eight minutes. Yeah, next fuel check, that'll be empty. So we'll just add whatever's on the main screen. What is the next fuel check? Oh, it's closer than that. We're at it right now. Snaker. And we'll call that Snaker. So, uh, what are we at? Uh, 24 plus... Uh, 150. 25.50. Snaker. Oh boy. Okay, that's math I'm not doing in my head. I just don't feel like it anymore. Not after that work order. That work order drained me. So. One seventy eight. Yep, we're ahead of the curve, so we are gonna stay at max. Yeah. Alright, looking good. Look in good. Oh, you know what we can do. I mean, we aren't really—we haven't really been staring at the cockpit much because we're doing work orders and stuff. Because y'all said you wanted to see more on air. We got a face full of it there with that work order. Hopefully, the next one's not that much a pain in the butt. I might just do a high-speed one, just just because. All right. Uh, how much time we got left on this, supposedly? Uh, yeah, a little under two hours. We will see. Hmm. Okay, back to... Five active work orders. This one's going to need to be... What is this? N31, is that coming in for repair? No. So that one needs a new work order. Uh, let's see what else we got going on. We're going to be doing work orders the entire cruise. Hopefully, like I said, I hope they go better than that one did. Uh, so that was N31, right? N31 is like... Here, he's good on 100 hour. He's here, he's coming in, but we have flying. That's about to be. This one's in maintenance, so I can't do anything with it. I'm not messing with the King Airs right off the bat, so we'll do his, uh, we'll do this guy's work order next. In 31, it is. I've also got. Uh, C-130's coming in, but they weren't... We go back to the work orders. Uh, this one has two and a half hours on it. This one has like eight hours, nine and a half hours on it. And this one, I think, is going to be in... Is this one that's going into maintenance? Yeah, I'll have to look. But I can see that I forgot some things. Okay, here's an important point. If you forget uh, something... So, uh, um, here, I didn't tell my crew to rest as soon as they got there. That's a full day. I can just look at it. So, you go to details. You guys have been playing forever know this. There is a, there is a small secret here. Um, and I do want them to sleep when they get there. And I, you can either just wait and hope you catch it, which I know I won't. Pause it. You can pause it in flight. Make sure you check this. 
Otherwise, your co-pilot will be missing and your flight attendant. So check it. Go back here. Tell them to force. And then just reactivate. There. Now it has a sleep symbol at the end. That's what you want. So I need to fix that on several of these. So it's one less thing to pay attention to if you can just automatically tell them, just look, you did 13, 14 hours, because I filled my work orders pretty good. Uh, details. Sleep. Yes. It expires in 11 hours. You'll get there. Not that I could do anything about it if it wasn't. And then, see how this says select a co-pilot? There's nothing here. Well, we don't need one, but uh, this we need. Just hit this, and it's back. Otherwise, it will yell at you. Okay, so we only have one work order that needs to be mooned. Little sleep symbol at the end. This one. Pause. Show all. Make sure we're all set. See, your flight attendant would have been gone too. Go here. 9.5 hours. Go to sleep. Now everybody has a moon at the end. And this guy, like I said, that's far enough away. 155. I wish you could order these by ETA. I wish there was a sort here. They could say, okay, here's the next one I need to do. But no, you got to do 44. 155 is next. No, 1215. No, that's, that's in the afternoon. He's got a ways to go. This is the next one. Oh, N31. This has been happening a lot lately. Um, you can ignore it. Just report the error just so they know about it. Uh, we're doing N30, N31. It's flying. I think it ends at RDU, and I didn't look at that, did I? It ends at RDU, yes. Oh. The other thing I didn't look at. Boy, this is going to be... Tell I'm getting tired. Care to you. It ends at... 155. Let's leave it some space. 230. Care to you. Shouldn't have a problem with pilots at RDU. We don't... Epity and Miss Blaisdell. Uh, we'll leave that in there for weight calculations. We may or may not need it. This is an ATR, right? Yeah, one. All right, so let's pray that this one goes a lot smoother. A lot of things are the same. We're starting at KRDU. We're just going to start with a from. And we're going to just try to keep this one going the whole way. There's no We don't need to get back to RDU. I don't need to work that hard. Oh, that's wrong, though. I just saw it. That's the wrong filter. Set that one back to where it belongs. And then this one needs to be in 31. Go. That's all fine. Forty-one thousand for got eleven hours to get there. That shouldn't be a problem. Uh, so three hours, and then this is a yeah, this is gonna be fine. Uh, that's getting close, but I believe that's gonna be okay. We'll check that on our spreadsheet. ATR nineteen five four two and nine hundred and thirty-five. We're clear. We're taking it. Except we need to make sure we're in our zone. We are. Okay, this is this will be straightforward. KBRD. All right, and then there's no 
hunting for a thousand pounds to fill this is a fool's errand, so no. Waste of time. So now we just go KBRD. This is how they're supposed to go. I say that now I'm going to get like 60 million of the most complicated things you can see. Wyoming? No, we can't take that. This is our line. For those of you who don't know, I have um, a self-imposed rule set. We are Eastern North America and our line is the western border of the Dakotas straight down. All the way to the southern, you know, southern tip of Mexico and then just make a square basically from North America to those, that's our area. So the Caribbean, uh, Bermuda, that kind of thing. Well, I don't know. No, not Bermuda. That's too, that's too far out. No. So, yeah, the Caribbean and everything east of, uh, basically Montana. I would like to have seen Montana. Okay. Enough talking. But, uh, yeah, we can't take that. That's in Wyoming. That's in the limits. Let's make sure I didn't. Okay, so that is in the limit. Not as good a payday. We want to stop at Amarillo. So take. Not a lot of passenger flights. I think the, the jet people are picking up all the people. You know, I've seen a lot of these. That's why our planes aren't filled with passenger seats. Lots of cargo to pick up. I mean, a hundred grand for a seven hundred. Oh, flight. Sure. D. Let's stop. Uh, we wanted to end up at Emerald is what we said, but we can check. So KBRD to KDHT. How much space do we have left? 3,000 pounds. I uh, could be wasting my time, but we'll check. Okay, nothing there. And then we'll check uh, Kama. Now I'm thinking we check... These, usually when the two airports are close, you can find jobs at it, but not tonight. Camera. Go the other way. We're just trying to decide which one we're going to hit first. If there are any, no deciding factors, I want to land at the biggest airport last. No, okay, so we're going to KDHT first. Because the bigger airports tend to have more and better jobs. At least my experience. Your mileage may vary. No, no, no. Do not buy 700 gallons of fuel. We checked all those. There's nothing there. So next, we just need to go start from Kama. We've already burned six and a half hours. See, this one's going much faster. And the big thing I have to keep reminding myself when, when I'm doing these is that I have this restriction. This is fine. Uh, 21,000. Well, let's see. I gotta check that on the... It's going 815. I think this is going to be close. Yep, can't take it. For those that don't know, here's what I'm using. Just a Google Sheet. And these colors, it's automatic. So if we could make it, so I'll... Right, uh, there. It'll show me that, fine, we're both payload and gross weight are fine. But here, where we had to go, what was it, 815? Payload was fine, but gross weight because of the additional fuel were over by a good 200 pounds. 
So that's what I'm when I say go to the spreadsheet. That's what I'm doing, just so you know. Been using a spreadsheet like this for ever since I've been doing on air, and I think I started almost after they right after they came out. Uh, at least for Flight Simulator, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 was. Was I using it? I don't, I don't know. It's been a, I've been using Honor for a long time. Did I have it before when I was in the previous flight simulator? I don't know. But we can't take that job, so moving along. 18 at 781. Yes, I know I can take that. And KNPA, yeah, we're going to hey, we're going to Florida. Panama City. Uh the weights are good. Pay's okay. We want to end up at KNPA, if not given no others. Oh, that's our big weight, too. So, okay. Well, anyway, take it. And as you guys are watching all this, please, I invite all the criticism in the comments or suggestions, however you want to look at it. Um, I am up for, um, positive criticism. So if it helps me do better with my airline or play this, uh, play this better, then I'm, I'm cool with that. I am open-minded to criticism. All right. So we were saying we wanted to end up at KNPA possibly, but we need to know. Well, let's do camera to KMVC. We have... Oh. No, we're not taking any extra weight because we're... I'm not hunting for 1,800 pounds. That's a waste of time. So if we want to end up at KMPA, we're just going to... Well, see if we dump off all this weight, we could go the other direction and grab another 13,000 pounds. Let's see if there's anything from KMPA to KMVC. See, now I have to... Damn it. All the letters start running together after a while. That's not it. There. I just did that wrong. KNPA to KMVC. Okay, I've become way too reliant on having an additional screen. Can't remember eight letters from one screen to the next. Now, there's nothing going that way, so let's reverse it just to see if we should go the other way. KMVC, then KNPA. Nothing that way, so we'll just end at KNPA. That takes care of that. Kima. Yes, thanks. Uh, KMVC. One, and then we need to go to KNPA. Right. We already know there's no loads in between them. We're at 9.9 .9 hours now. So we'd like to end up at... Oh, look at our... Our alternate is one of our FBOs. Let's go find out if there's anything to take over there. KNPA to KHRT. Although I don't think we're that. Are we really ready to the end? Well, 9.9. .9, I don't know. Sure. It's that close and there's enough money in it. We'll drop them off. And there's enough money in it for that short flight. All passengers. Holy crap. 9, uh, 16, 19, 20. We can take all of them. Oh, yeah. 10 grand to go, like, across the bay. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm good with that. That's highly efficient. We don't have anything else on us, right? Yeah. Done. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I am Bart. We are Bart. Miami Center American 153, 6 heavy, flight level 370. American 153, 6 heavy, Miami Center. Continue as planned.
Okay. And we'll force crew because they'll be at ten and a half hours. You sleep there. An FBO. That's all done. Now, another thing you can do if you want to make sure that everything went wherever it was supposed to go is add a leg and it should say zero and zero. That's one way to check. There is a second way to check. Is hit save. And go back to the job screen, hit pending. And now, because of what I'm doing with my C-130s, I'm going to have a lot of open jobs, but I can see that they're all really... Uh, well, this is the next level, whatever, thir level 13 mission. But these are all Mexico. This is, so it's a C there's a C-130 that goes back and forth between the two. What is... That's not... But that's not on this trip. Fuck. LCH. Delta what did I do? We okay, so I'm gonna have to use a probably use a King Air to go pick up this because it's uh 1330. That's what that's what I'm saying. I use the King Airs to kind of clean up mistakes because apparently I forgot to pick something up somewhere or I was overweight. But you see how this lets you know that's Mexico, that's Mexico. So there's everything else is picked up. That's, that lets me know I left something behind somewhere, and I'll use a King Air to go. It's an AI pilot with a King Air to go clean that up. Because it's the cheapest to fly, and that's not much of a load. Okay, so with that all said, this order is ready to go. Sleeping. Okay, so now we can look at, do we want a tanker or need to? Next one, the prices are fine. Meh. Probably not worth it to tanker that far. Good prices. Yeah, that's fine. It doesn't matter. That's we get wholesale fuel here, so that's good. Activate it. Uh, we did we have enough passenger? Yeah, twenty one. So all right. So that'll start. So when this truck comes in, these guys will pick up and take off. But now Miami Center, we have taken care of. That one. This one is a C-130, and it will be there in two hours. So this will be the next one, right? Yeah, this will be the next one to do. Do we have anything else that's idling? So I normally like checking this with the live, live map, and I'll show you how I do that normally. But I'm trying to see if I can do it with something less intense while I'm running OBS and the flight simulator. Uh, so we would normally go max payload. So we want our big guys running first. That's in the maintenance. So the next one down are our King Airs. I'm flying one. Uh, none really need maintenance. This guy is in the shop. And this is my base camp thing. Okay, so the no way I normally like to do it, and hopefully... Uh, let's see. Just go to the live operations map. And then do the same thing is tell it I just want idle. And because you can do this double sort where you can't do that on the aircraft screen. I want cargo capacity descending. So my C 130s and AR and ATRs would all be up here and these guys would be down here. This shows me I've got two King Airs that I could fill. But I already know I don't have enough pilots to keep these going twenty four seven. Um, so if there's not a pilot sitting there with it, and there is on this one, so this one could go. Is that the one I just did? AEFK. So, okay, we can, we can send him. AEFK. So let's go ahead and do a work order for him. Southwest 2840, contact Jacksonville Center on 119.1. Good day. Oh, where was that place that was... So, KEFK. Uh, so let's center on that. That's center, southwest, one, two, five, six, flight level, three, one, zero. Oh, he's way up there. Oh my god, he's nowhere near that mess. Southwest, I think the messed one, two, up one's five, over here, right? Center, so if we go to pending... But we might, two jobs, be able to get him over there. Because we need to clean up this. It's $40,000 just to do that one last thing. Nine passengers with 2,778. So 2090, yeah, King Air can do that. But he has to get to... So where where did they get stuck? Current, KLCH. 
Yeah, well, it's not going to show me that, is it? KL oh, Lake Charles. Wow, okay, so we'll see. Uh, what is this? 79J. Oh, that's that one that needs to return. Let's get this one to pick that up. Uh, I forget how much time he has on him. Oh, I didn't want that. So we'll just save this. I can just pick up. Uh, save that one. We'll come back to it. That's what I want to mess with. The idol. She's got some time on her. How much? Yeah, three hours. So yeah, she can take that other job. She's got three hours until she has to go to sleep. That's not as fortunate as I was hoping. Should have done this one first. Because it's going to take an hour for her to get there. Uh, I don't know if she can. Well, she'll just be over. Let's give it a shot. Give it a shot. No, I don't want to talk to you. Co pilot will take care of all that. So let's, uh, N75. Traffic in and we're going to Lake Charles. So, N75, 79J. We're going to KLCH. See if we can find you some weight to take with you. But clean up our mess anyway. So now we need... Uh, and where is it going to cluck? KLCH2. Clock. Miami Center, Southwest, one six eight nine, flight level three six zero. Southwest, one six eight nine, Miami Center, continue as planned. Oh no, that's not what I wanted. I wanted um, she's at seventy nine J. First, we got to pick it up. Then we can go take it somewhere. Let's see if we get lucky. Oh, good. Uh, that's nothing for a king air. Yep. He says. Yeah, that's nothing to worry about. All right, so there's that. We got our fuel, got our destination. Then she gets here, she can pick that up. And then she's going to cluck. And then we'll see if there's more stuff we can put on there. So this is, now we do. That's why it's good to have these smaller planes around to clean up stuff, because it doesn't cost you as much to clean up. And I made a little money on this little side trip. Uh, and there's... Uh, and more on this. Okay, she has... 4,000 pounds remaining. Holy, what kind of... Oh, it's for an ATR. What am I... In 75, I was like, yeah, that's not going to work. Let's try that. I mean, I already know that's what's here. She can take... Ah, oh, she could... 3940. Can't take that, but she can take this. Wait, how many... No, she can't. We only have three seats left. Can't take either one. Oh, darn. That's alright. So, she'll just do that trip as designed. She's gonna get there at 4:57, but she takes off in time, so she's gonna she's just gonna go to sleep when she gets there. And for the King Airs, that's fine. So we're done. I'll just tell her to go to sleep. It won't matter. Raphael. Raphael looked like a. Okay. I guess Raphael could be a girl's name. Uh. Works for me. Could have sworn. Look like a girl. I don't know. But this is all fine. This is best we're gonna get out of it. Activate it. Yeah. Is that Raphael? That's Raphael. Maybe you pronounce that differently and I'm not familiar. But I believe that is Raphael Fernandez Bello. Raphael Fernandez Bello. 
All right, so yeah, couldn't get those extra loads, but hey, we got our mess cleaned up for a, for zero dollars. We made some money along the way. All right, so we've got a few planes flying around. <laughs> got one in the shop. That's I. That's why I do prefer this, and then uh, turn that off. And then you can, if you really want to see how busy you are. Oh, well, I guess... Oh, because I have this, so you need to go all. So we got one going up to Canada eventually. Couple going down here. Some I'm doing this one. Uh, stuff coming into and out of Mexico. That's probably a C-130, right? Yep. What's he carrying? Does it say on this, or do you have to go to the yeah, from a different screen? All right, so... Now that we've pretty much taken care of everything we can, look at our work orders real quick. Oh, I, yeah, I guess I could work on that one. That one's going to start when it starts, 2.30. It's two hours. And that's N31. That's this one. This guy's going to end. And it's N16. No danger there. Oh yeah, in two hours. Uh, will we be back by then? Yeah, we got an hour and 20 minutes left. Niner Decimal 1 for Barley 01. Jacksonville Center Barley 01 Flight Level 270. Barley 01 Jacksonville Let's Center. Let's check the plane. Make sure the plane is doing well. Fine. Fine. Beautiful. Jacksonville so, Center, United it's an hour before we have. What is the next one? Senka. Are we getting to a point where I need to start thinking about... Uh, we don't need that anymore. I really want to... That. Where did, where did the rest of the map go? Jacksonville Center, JetBlue, 2319, <laughs> flight level 340. Um, hello? 2319, Jacksonville Center, continue as planned. Uh, well, uh, not for navigational use. Well, no crap in this state. <laughs> um, anybody? Bueller? I guess I could try pulling up a map and then going back. Redraw? Refresh? Push random things? Where? Okay, do we zoom in? No, there's just no IFR map here. Okay. So, welcome to the Navigraph in Sim panel. <laughs> uh, it's never done this to me, though, before. Let's try changing to VFR. Oh, no, it's just not going to show any maps. Low IFR. Uh, what have I done? No, I don't need that. Did I, did I hit something? It said, please turn my map off. Why would you have that option? I don't even... What does that do? Oh, I don't want to edit the flight plan. I'm happy with it. What do I have to do to get my map back? Okay, a uh, little, well, then let's try closing it.
better? You already had it load loaded, right? Yes, we're good. Dismiss. Okay. Not sure what all that was about, but apparently that's what you have to do is just close it and reload it. Okay, so now... We're heading for Senka, so good. We're almost over the whole Transgulf thing. And then... Probably it's... Like an hour and 15 minutes out. United 209 or tree traffic is 9 o'clock per mile at flight level 3 for zero Airbus. Report them in sight. The last Jet weather we got when we left traffic. for Asheville for mile at flight level three, six, was, zero uh, I wrote it down. Report them in sight. Uh, when was. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. What? United 209 or tree traffic in sight. When was uh, 200 at 12 gusting to 20? That's what it was. Have the Airbus in sight. So 200. And we'll be landing on 17 with a crosswind component. Why not? It's barley. I always have 17 knots with about a, let's see, 17 to 22, 50 degrees. I'm going to eat half of that. So, not 8, 9. Crosswind. Uh, let's see what approaches we have. I looked at all this earlier, but I, my memory isn't that good. Okay, so we can close that. But we're going to assume 17 for now. Runway 7, I'm going to say ILS. I, then I know I have a precision approach if, because we have weather coming in. So we'll assume that's what we're going to get. With, that's what we want. And then for that. I'll do a bunch of this now because I may get time crunched at the end. Uh, like I said, i got to pick my daughter up. And I'd rather not have to pause and then come back and then edit it out. So I'm trying to practice. Get ready for live streams. Life has a way of getting in the way. Okay, fairly straightforward. ILS, there is. We're going to be coming f literally from like here. So yeah, we're going to have to do... Hey, look, a procedure turn. <laughs> well, that went so well before when the Logitech multi-panel freaked out. But yeah, so we got a procedure turn to do. Because we're going to be coming in like... Dude, almost directly at it, right? And we're coming, like, what is that, one, almost exactly 180? Or, sorry, 360? That's, like, straight north. Yeah, so we'll definitely be coming in from the south. So we'll go straight at the Keens. Oh, an NDB. Yay. Why wouldn't I? Oh, oh my gosh, yeah. Well, we'll be using GPS to get to Keynes. Then we'll turn 347 on the outbound for how far? Where's the DME on that? Uh, and granted, I could do this this all with GPS. I wouldn't have to use the DME equipment, but... Uh, 347 to what? Uh, here's your procedure turn area right here. United 1909 for contact Miami Center on one tree. All of this right here. This is it. Good day. Going from the south. Seven point one. United one nine nine or four. The seven point one from the ILS. We do our procedure turn. No, that's not correct. Cause see, this is five point. Oh no, that's from here. Yeah, that's right. Seven point one. Turn around. Yep. So 
but yeah, so we come straight in when we're 7.1 after Emo. We drop down to 5600. Before that, they don't, I guess we just need to be above. There it is, right there. 7.1 Emo. That's what I was looking for. I couldn't see it. 6,000. Yeah, we're going to descend to 6,000. And then we're going to go straight to through Emo at 6,000. When we hit 7.1 on the DME, go to 032 for a minute. Standard turn. And then when we're lined back up, you know, and then we basically catch the localizer. Turn in. And then just start our descent to 5,000 to 100, and then at Keens, where we catch everything and we can do the rest of the approach. Minimums 2364 on ILS, which is 200 above runway. Uh, missed approach. Straight out. Climb 5400 direct to Bra. We're going this way, so Bra must be down there somewhere. There it is. Yeah. Oh. But. Yep. So we have to switch back to GPS or go to an NDB. I'll take the GPS. If it's not there, then yeah, I'm gonna have to tune in an NDB. Good God, those things still exist. All right, so big thing I need is put that into the nav. 1.9. And we can go ahead and transfer it. I'm not. I haven't been using. Well, we're on GPS, so it's ignoring it anyway. Uh. I briefed this early because yeah, that was I, I totally I was looking for this and I was trying to read it and so I was like I didn't see this I was trying to read it this way but it's basically yeah we go in because this doesn't have an altitude right that's here those six thousand feet to Keens no, uh yep two Keens seven point one DME. And then we start our procedure turn. Catch the localizer off the procedure turn. And just ILS approach after that. And see, there's this stuff all around. That's why I said that we're... I think the last time I flew in here, I did a VFR approach. We'll do, we'll do the precision approach with all that crap around. And minimum safe altitude is from the. We're coming in this way. Jacksonville Center Frontier Flight. Looks like 7,800. Because we're going to be coming like that. Frontier Flight 679 or Jacksonville Center. Continue as planned. I mean, it's right on the line of 5678, so I'll take 78. At least until we get. Here, then we can drop to six, take six out here, come back around, and then after we come back around, 5600. Yeah, so we drop down after Keens. Yep. Okay. I think I just briefed it. That was a whole lot. And I do remember that you guys do watch my videos to see Barley screw up. But usually with approaches, I'm pretty good. On air, yeah, I mess the work orders up all the time. Which is why I have king ears to go clean up my messes. Alright. We don't have a fuel check for 42. Um, but we know we are... An hour and ten away. We are burning... 
700 gallon per uh, 700 pounds per hour and we have kind of 2,000 pounds so we could burn fuel for almost three hours two and a half hours for sure and we're an hour out so yeah fuel is fine this is fine and with that Finally, I believe I have earned another drink, and then we'll see if we need to do any other work orders. Oh, I know what I need to do. The one thing that I did have not done yet, in on air, and I will do that after I go get a drink, but I will show you, is now that we have all this going on, I need to finish this one, but the king air isn't going to count for this, is I need to reposition for where these people end up. RDU, 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 MMTM. Well, that's going to be easy. A lot of people at RDU, and I need to make sure I didn't hang somebody out somewhere. Uh, for this, definitely like the. So RDU and MTM are the only place we need people. Should have no filters here. We have a crew at MTM, so we're good there, right? That's where you are. Yes, we already have a crew there, so there should be nobody else sitting around. He belongs to that aircraft. I don't see anybody else idling, and we have lots of employees. Well, it's mostly mechanics, but uh, one, two, three, four, five pilots, six pilots, and three flight attendants. That's three crews. So if we go back, is three crews enough? RDU, RDU, RDU. Oh, we need a fourth crew. I don't have anybody to give to it. See, this is what I'm telling you. Because I've got two guys out in King Airs, we're spread thin. So there's going to be a plane that's going to have to sit for a while while somebody wakes up. Because there's no there's no idlers anywhere for me to move. To RDU. Everybody's already there. I mean, I could leave the King Air up there and move him. And granted, the King Air is less valuable as far as cargo than that, so I may do that. That'll get one there, though. Um, that aircraft needs two pilots, so yeah, it doesn't do any good to move him. So even having hit level 13 today and getting two more pilots still stretched thin. When you keep them running this continuously, you know, you kind of get behind the curve. And that's with one in the shop. Crap, this one's going to come out and I'm going to have to pull. Crazy stuff. So yeah, we got two sleeping over here. When do they wake up? See, yeah, it'll be these two that we move after they wake up. So we'll end up waiting because nobody else is like anybody else is sitting around. It's not already at RDU. Nope, sure not. Okay, we can turn off that because it's slowing things down. He's the only one, and one pilot isn't enough, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so repositioning would normally be next. None is needed. And that is why sometimes I do work really hard to get them back to some of our... The three main FBOs right now are KICT, MMTM, and RDU. I try to keep crew with those because it's where the planes tend to end up. So I don't have a ton of repositioning to do, and that's worked out in this case. So with that done, there's no more on-air stuff to do. Oh, just in case you missed it, we did hit level 13 today, and what I spent it on was aircraft use. Basically, to keep the maintenance is my number one cost. So this makes them use the aircraft more carefully, and then fuel is not a big cost for me. So I want to spend all three points here. Um, XP matters. Um, I mean, we're going to run out of skill tree before long, but every level gives me two pilots. And to grow, we need that, so we'll probably fill up. I, I, know, I might just go straight for there. So now that we've lit that one up, next two points are probably going to go here. So I spent it on this. I One here, and I spent one on something else. I got two points. I spent one here. Oh, I think I spent it here, yeah. Spent one for FBO's agreement so I could get more queries. Because those queries are what keep the, the C-130s flying. With full loads. Love to show you guys that. Um, you know what? I could do a work order for a C-130 when I get back. I'm going to go make a drink. 
And I have enough time to do that because um, if we go to So even though the C-130 is a couple hours out, right? Uh, you can't really see that here, can you? Nope. I can stack a work order behind it and then just delay it. This, this one's still... Oh, it's only an hour and a half out, so we're going to do this next. So what is that? Uh, N16. 164. N164. Okay, we'll add a work order just so I know what I'm doing when I get back. There's that again. All right, so he's at MTM. We know there's a crew there. Oh, I forgot to check the time, but anyway, let's... Uh oh, we can't go before 2.30, and they get back at 2.44, I thought they said. Yeah. So we'll set this up for 3 a.m. Going to 127 decimal 8 United 1400. And then... Well, we got one that's just idling. We take him, the other one can just sleep. In Mexico. Okay, so... Here, these are all from the FBO queries. And these three have to go first, because I got 18 hours, but... If we take all of this... Without even doing a query, like a, a going to the logistics screen, the job screen, I've got 12,000 pounds left. Now, what I can do is I can go look in the FBO thing. Should have four queries now. Or no, we just get more. We get more. Oh, I thought I added one. I don't know. I have to look at it. I can't touch this one because I can't fly a C-130 and not until Blackbird Simulations comes out with their C-130J. This one looks like good. It has to be completed in 40 hours. I can do that with... How much weight? Oh, yeah. No, we can totally do that. So we'll take that one because it pays more. 200 grand. And see, these go both ways. So... Oh, that's wrong. Don't do that. I don't... Uh, MMTM. You have to pick the right FBO. It doesn't know what I want. Still good. Okay, so if we want to add weight, 69 hours is plenty to move 25,000 pounds. Yeah, we're taking it. Take that. Okay, and see, on the other side, at RDU, Bombardier 8 Tango, my um, I'm doing 20, the same thing. 60. Or wherever the other half of that was. So, now... We'll take... See, so we won't be able to take all of it, right? So, all but... But now I know we can take 9,075, so all I have to do is come in here. Uh, hey, why don't you split off... Oh, wait, I need to put fuel on first before I start doing that. Cancel. Uh, we're going to... ARDU. Need 4865. Okay, now I know how much weight I have left. 9,000... It's the same, so... It was... So, let's see... Jacksonville Center, Southwest 3162, flight level 340. Is any of it passengers? 14. I have somebody on. We're good. 9075, I need to split. Let's take it from one that has the most time, just in case. Although these are finishing another job. But yeah, this has to be in. 13 hours, so let's split this one. 9075. Okay. What? It said I could take 90. Oh, no. Uh, wait, what? Okay, so I need to split it again. I'm not sure what happened there, but I thought I had. must have misread the number. Negative, so we have to drop off 59 pounds. Nine oh sixteen. Let's just do screw it. Okay, there we go. We'll just pick the rest of that up at another time. So now we've got this thing as full as it can get, and it's going to take a trip to, to RDU. We have crew. That's fine. But then we add a leg. 
at RDU. No, not, not going to RDU. We're going to go back to MT MMTM. 51. And there's stuff sitting here that hasn't been picked up. you got to watch out for these orange things. And then these, of course, need to be... They're not going that way. So we don't... Uh, where's that going? Yes. Yes. Uh, that one's already being taken. Yes. No. Okay, so that's everything, and I still have that left. Now I need to go look at the FBO queries for RDU and see if there's more weight I can pick up. This is why I need more queries. Okay, so... Eight hours. 2,000 pounds, 12 people. I think we can handle that. Right? Because this is going to start at three, which is two hours. Then it's going to be five, which is seven. No, it won't get there in time. So we do not want to take that. We won't We won't make that. Won't make that either. So we can't do those two. So we can take this. These aren't time limited. I can't take these two because they require human people. And I can't fly the C-130 yet, so we'll take this one. Okay, so that'll add to what's available here. Let's see if we can't fill this thing up for the return trip. Alright. So there. There, now we're over. So we need to figure out... What do we go over on? Oh, passengers. Uh, I'm not going to split two passengers. We'll just leave them for another trip. There we go. And is there any extra weight we can take? No, we can't. That was all... Here we go. No, that's... That just... Kiki, Kiki's uh, Western North Carolina, so no. 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 All right. So, we have uh, 6,000 pounds. It's not for this being left. is isn't a big deal. But we can go see if we can hunt it down, because we know where we're going. Now we go here, and we're going from RDU, MMTM. See if there just happens to be a package we can take with us. It's about 6,000 pounds. Nope. Okay, then we'll leave with that. Uh, that's 9.9 .9 hours. They could make one more trip back this way. We have 35. We need one. Done. Uh, so let's see if we can make one more round trip, or one more trip, MMTM. Okay, now you have to start being careful. But there, don't touch any of those, they're already loaded. And you hate seeing this. Oh, this is where you have to be careful with these. They won't unload if they're secondary things. Because they weren't going to RDU, they were going to places around RDU. So yeah, we need to unload those at two. Ah. One tree, tree decimal seven southwest. So here. See, they don't show up here. You have to do this. And again, legs. And these three need to be left near RDU, not go back to Mexico. So this one, this one, and this one. There we go. Now that makes more sense, right? Well, one and three, I don't want to see that either. So... No, you're... We're in Mexico, how did you get... If you're on one, you should have gotten off in two. So let's take... I didn't load them. So somehow they're showing loaded here. Center on one Oh, you have arrived. Oh, and I'm gonna have to get them to where they need to go pretty quick. So that's what the king ears are for. Alright. Now I've got zero, zero. And at MTM, so now we avoid the ones that are already checked. What that, those things are, are leftovers from when I was doing a, an experiment with saying flying stuff to RDU that needs to go to the airports around it and then use the King Airs or ATRs to 
take him out. That turned into such a quagmire. You want to complicate some work orders? Do that. Uh, then I decided I would just do the C-130s FBO to FBO and have the queries take care of it. And that's made more money and been less of a headache. So now, there we go. MTM. Who are to you? Put in the fuel. 4865. And we will be over, but it's 1500 bucks per person. That's fine for the amount of money this thing brings in. And what do we have left? We would like to add more. May I have more, sir? So... FBO queries. MMTM. Let's see if it has more to give us. No, we already used them all. Okay, so I have to do logistics. And that's why I spent those points today on uh, queries. Or a point on queries specific to KRD. I want more queries and more jobs per query. So that's going to be where we're going to spend some points. Because this is like easy money with the C-130s. There's Checking nothing else. Envoy 3473, okay. flight level 310. Okay. Envoy 3473, Jacksonville Center. Continue as planned. That's a half-loaded C-130. And for payload, a fifth. Is anybody in a hurry? We could sleep the crew here with and get rid of the penalty and then take this stuff tomorrow with probably another query. When... Oh, this doesn't want to tell me... Uh, so instead of paying the penalty on, on a fifth of a load, none of these are in a hurry. Now let's unload this. Hey, we got zeros. Delete the leg. Sleep everybody here. And then tomorrow, hopefully, there'll be more stuff to take. So, it's not really 14 hours. There's the other thing. You delete the leg, and it's really 10 hours, roughly. So we're going to force them to sleep here. And then it starts at 3 a.m. Activate. And then tomorrow, another set of FBO queries, hopefully, we'll have. So we got to match things up. Uh, 2.44, 3 a.m. They... The people wake up at 2.30, 3 a.m. That all works out. Lots of work orders. This guy, uh, I'll do that on the ground. Because I think I need to... I mean, we may fill that one in. But hey, for those who are asking, you got to see a lot of on air. And if there's something else you wanted to see, let me know. Um, I've got some other content coming. I did a... Um, I'm going to do a... Excuse me. A base camp run, hopefully tomorrow. But see, the base camps were going to be up here. Evansville's in here somewhere. There's Terra Oat. Maybe he's, it's in here somewhere, I promise. I'm just not showing because I'm not close enough. Big Straight. Robinson, Lawrenceville, please. Right in there somewhere. There it is. That's Okay, so here's the area anyway. Stop it. Yeah. There's Evansville right there. We have an FBO here, and I've got a Cessna 208 that's sitting there. And it has been since Wednesday. But the weather's been doing this since Wednesday. And I need to be VFR so that I can find a place to put my base camp. And uh, there's a reservoir here. Between Huntingburg and French Lick. It's like right there under that giant mess. Yeah, uh, here. You can see how bad the weather is, and it's been like this all week. Uh, this area right here, the Patoka Reservoir. I was gonna, I want to put a base camp, I think, right in here somewhere. Like, it's far enough away from this airport, far enough away from that one, like 10 miles from each. I wanted to put one there, and then I haven't found, but maybe up here, uh, somewhere up in here. And then down... Where is... That's going to one two five decimal seven five barley. Then zero. off of the Green River down here somewhere. Center barley, zero one oh, no, that's level in the wrong place there. Right down in here off the Green River. I wanted to have one. So those are my three. I have I have three uh base camp kits sitting here. And a Cessna two oh eight. But um 
it's the weather's been that awful since I did it. <laughs> and yeah, so yeah, it's all low IFR. So I haven't been able to get any of the base camp stuff done. So if it hopefully tomorrow will be better. Uh, other than that, I have a video that I did today where I flew from uh, Mississippi to Alabama to finish up level 13. And uh, on approach, my the Logitech multi-panel broke. Well, it didn't break. It M Microsoft froze in it while doing the approach, a procedure turn on the approach, uh, and then it disconnected. So yeah. That video will be interesting. Should have that out sometime tomorrow, I think. Tomorrow being Saturday. Uh, of course, this video will probably be out Sunday-ish. I don't think it'll be up tonight. I'm not even going to be. We're not even going to be landed till after ten o'clock. Got twenty minutes to the next nav point. We have. 48 minutes. Well, I know one thing. Uh, I had my... I told my wife to... She would have to go... She needed to pick up my daughter because at first I was just like, well, I had one drink. It's not a big deal. But no, I'm going to have another one. Because that's the whole point of Friday Night Flights. So I asked the wife to take care of that. Because if I have two drinks, then I'm not driving. A drink is, you know, at whatever it was, 8 o'clock, and then not driving until 10.30 at night. That's fine. Jacksonville Center, American 2432, flight level 380. But no, when it gets into American 2, that gets... To Jacksonville Center, continue as planned. Iffy. Well, my wife will take care of that. Um, I guess for other on-air stuff, good. American two four three two contact Atlanta. Do the dashboard. Good day. American two three two. All right. So right now we're at one point three three. We were at one point oh something. After. So if you didn't know, we got pushed off the leaderboard. We didn't get pushed off. We fell off because of all the FBO stuff I had done. It raised our company value because of the new assets and our income hadn't jumped yet. Our income was still like at 7.5 or something. But now our income has jumped where it should. This cash is going to get burned on maintenance tonight. So that's going to drop our value to about 7. Income of 14. That's going to put us at 2. 2 will put us back on the leaderboard or it should. Yeah, see. That was our spot. <laughs> We just fell off because of all the investments we did in FBOs. But yeah, we should get back, you know, second, third place. It depends on how far into two we get. We need 1.7 to get on it all. I mean, we're not going to get anywhere. We're at 9 million to get to, to even get onto this list. It's 4 billion. That's not going to happen anytime soon. Uh, hours, flight hours. Yeah. Four weeks. In two weeks, I've done 20. This is going to add a whole... Four. Yeah, I don't see. I don't see hitting these. Not with my life requirements. Uh, I mean, we'll get to a hundred, but so is everybody else. Uh, this looks like a leaderboard where everybody just gets there, falls off, gets there, falls off, gets there, falls off. Uh, I think this is the one where we're we're gonna play because I just know with. My obligations that me getting into these isn't going to happen. And that's just... that No one did that in a few weeks. One, three, four decimal for five allegiant, one, nine, or eight, eight. But yeah. Wow. Look at United Australia. 19... That's... 1900%? Return on assets? That's crazy. What are... I mean... Yeah, that is crazy. 
Wish you could click on them and get information about them, but no. Everybody else is like in the normal range, which is like for the leaderboard, for at least for the last two, three weeks that I've seen, is 1.6 to, you know, two and a half. Man, it's just crazy. All right, well, since I'm going to go make another drink and the wife is going to pick up the daughter, we should be going landing in about 45 minutes. We'll do a couple more system checks. I will leave you with some scenery. That's all good. There's our right, fuel, fine, balanced. Yeah, I'll leave you with scenery. Not a whole lot to look at. There you go. Center Southwest 279er Niner Flight Level 350. 
Southwest 279er Niner Jacksonville Center, continue as planned. American 2 Tree 2 Tree contact Jacksonville Center on 1 Tree 2 Decimal Tree. Good day. Barley 01 contact Atlanta Center on 1 Tree for Decimal 5. Good day. Going to 1 Tree 4 Decimal 5 Barley 01. Atlanta Center Barley 01 flight level 270. Barley 01 Atlanta Center continue to sink as planned. I guess since there is some potential for weather, might as well get that on. Okay, so now that we're actually over some stuff, let's see if those performance numbers hold up. 36, 37, 38. So this is what I used to see, so maybe there is no difference. I'm used to seeing around four, between 40 and 43. Well, the 50 was, must have been because we were over the ocean, because... So... Eh. I haven't changed my settings. I mean, the only setting I've changed is the turbulence one because the default was low, and apparently that's uh, uh, not realistic. Yeah, no, this is this is what I'm used to seeing. So no no change in performance. I mean, it's yeah, half the CPU using about 75, 60 to 70 percent of my GPU. Even the old 1080s kicking. And granted, I don't have it turned on ultra or anything. I've got it on high-end system, I think, is the setting. Plus some tweaks. Based on... Whatever. Two and a half years of flying in the sim. We got a... Fuel check in eight minutes. Yeah. Off the top of the head, we've got uh, 35 minutes left, and we're burning 700 gallons an hour, 700 pounds per hour. We've got 1,600, two and a half hours worth of fuel. Yeah, we're, we're set. Especially with a long descent. Oh, I see. I see cloudnesses. That's moisture. That's freezing. Uh. I'll turn them on if we don't need them. We just have to remember on descent to turn them off, but that's why we have checklists. Foxtrot, you are 300 feet below your assigned altitude. Climb and maintain 
I guess we lost our tailwind. Now it's a crosswind. I mean, it's a slight tailwind. Three forty on ground speed. Next is Sinka. We're doing 340, we're supposed to do 337, so we're in line. Check fuel. We should have 1456 left when we get there. Zero, Over 1600 right now. Good day. We'll rebrief the pr approach on descent. For Barley, zero one. Atlanta Center Barley, zero 01, flight level 270. Barley zero 01 Atlanta Center, continue to sink us as planned. Atlanta Center Southwest Tree 162 Flight Level 340. Southwest Tree 162 Atlanta Center, continue as planned. Alright. Guess I could have let them wander around. Small plane, no wandering necessary, but... Now I need to add that to my cruise checklist. That's one I forget. Allegiant six two three contact Atlanta Center on one two three decimal nine or five. Good day. American two four three two contact Atlanta Center on one two eight decimal zero. Good day. Going to one two three decimal nine or five allegiant six two three. JetBlue one eight eight two contact Atlanta Center on one two eight decimal zero. Good day. One two eight decimal zero for American two four three two. Going to one two eight decimal zero jet blue one eight eight two. I guess as far as flight simulator happenings, Sim Update 12 doesn't seem to have broken anything that I have noticed from our flight so far. And the one I, the one I did earlier was like a total of an hour or so. Didn't get a chance to see much. Unless, you know what, but then I did have the thing with the multi-panel. We'll see on this approach because it's another procedure turn. If it, that happens again. So basically I was in the middle of twisting the heading knob to do the procedure turn, and it just freaked. Atlanta Center Delta One Four Nine Seven Heavy. And that never, that's never happened before. I don't know how many hundreds of procedure turns Delta I've done with that thing. Seven Heavy Atlanta Center, continue as planned. Descend and maintain flight level two eight zero Delta One Nine Four Six Heavy. Um, but the turbulence, so far I'm liking the realistic turbulence is more realistic than the turbulence was prior to Sim Update 12. Performance-wise, 
Yeah, I can't say I'm seeing any difference, you know, positive or negative. It's right around 40, which is what I'm used to. G GPU and CPU, 50, 60, 70%. It's not seeing a real difference there, but no complaints. It didn't break anything. Uh, did I notice anything? Uh, splitting these will force me to get a, you know, pull a 530 manual and learn how to, because how to what you know if it's really re-entering the same flight plan twice mm, pass uh, it might just if it doesn't give me any the only information i'm getting here that i don't get over here is the ground speed and track i'll just use it for that and be happy the other question i would have is if let's say this one died how do i i mean this would be nav 2 but uh Fine, I could fly the needle, but how do I tell the autopilot to use that instead? I don't... I don't... Yeah, I don't see any way to tell it. So that's something I'd have to look up is... That's not what I wanted. Thank you. Yeah, how do I say autopilot use this one? So if I go and put the whole flight plan in here just because as a backup and this one dies Oh, how do I how, how do I do that? How do I I don't know I don't know I have, so before these were like attached at the hip, so whatever you put in this one showed up on this screen. So it really didn't function as a backup. Now it could, I just have to figure out how. And. I don't think of anything else from Sim Update 12 that I've. I mean, I don't care about the WAS stuff, whatever that is. I don't have an Xbox. We have a PlayStation 5, and I don't mess with it very much. My kids tend to. Daughter loves Overwatch, Overwatch 2, uh, and Minecraft. God, that game's ancient, but it's a big deal. Uh, and then she was playing uh, Genshu Impact something. I think it's mainly a mobile game, but it's gone to console. Genshin Impact. She was playing that. Uh, my son is mainly first-person shooters. That's uh, and uh, Ratchet and Clank. He has uh, all of them back to the the PS1 days. We've been. PlayStation family for a long time, but he has my old PS2. Then we have a we had a PS3, PS4, PS5. Uh, the PS3 was a decision. I don't know if you guys remember back then. But that's in the days with um, before the decision before the market or whoever had decided that we were going to use Blu-ray and not. What Atlanta was it? Barley, uh, HD DVD. So the the Xbox. Zero, I, I think it was just the Xbox generation. They were pushing HD DVD, and Sony was pushing Blu-ray. But in the in the in the marketplace, it hadn't been decided yet which way to go. And the deciding thing, and my wife were sitting back, we're like, well, we're not buying one or the other, right? Um, this is before PS3. But uh. We're not buying a Blu-ray player or an HD DVD player. So we had our DVD, a DVD player, if you remember such things for TV. Um, we weren't going to buy an HD DVD player or a Blu-ray player until we saw that it was clear that it went one way or the other. Um, and this is getting back to my earlier days as a not adult yet. Not trying to get my age away too easy. Uh, the Betamax VHS days. And, oh, and Laserdisc. That la that lasted a minute and a half, but the Betamax VHS wars. 
Uh, but yeah, so we decided to sit back and just live with our DVDs for a while uh, and wait until a decision got made. Well, it was when Disney finally came out and said, we're only going to be producing on Blu-ray. That changed it for everything. There was HD DVD died that minute. And we went out and spent a ridiculous sum of money on a Blu-ray player. We no, bought it from a department store. Because uh, back then, your choices were like the niche home electronic stores. It, I mean, this is before, uh, way before Best Buy, but even before Circuit City and that kind of thing. So you had these little niche places that overpriced everything. And then department stores had an electronics department. And uh, we just bought it from there, but it was still... I can't remember what we spent, but it was a, it was a lot of money back then. I think it was like, for a, especially for a Blu-ray player, it was like 350 bucks or something. So later, the PS3 comes out, and it's got Blu-ray. And this this was another, and it was around the same time, I think. And you know, everything gets much together 20 something years. Uh, and it was gonna, the, the, it was Xbox versus PS3. Well, the PS3 had the Blu-ray, and I was like, yeah, we're just doing that. And we used the PS3 as our Blu-ray player, and we moved the one we bought into another room, so that if we wanted to watch, you know, a DVD in there, we could, whatever. But that's a, that's a long way back. But yeah, so we have, placed, and be, ever since PlayStation 3, it was just done. I mean, we've had, we had a GameCube, we had a Wii, because we had Wii ones back then, and they really liked the whole, you know, controller, motion, whatever, things from the Wii. Uh, but yeah, since then, so around here we've got a PlayStation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. My son collects these things now, because we've always had them. And I was just going to keep them, I didn't know why, and he's like, can I have those? And I'm like, sure. So he's got PlayStation 1 through 4 in his room, all connected to a monitor. Through a mux, uh, and then he's got the Wii, the GameCube, a Sony, and he's got uh, he's got the Nintendo Entertainment and the Super NES, and he's got the PSP, which is the PlayStation Portable, and I don't think he has a Game Boy Advance. Oh, he has another one from way back when with the fold-out double screens. I forget what that is. Uh, and he has uh, the one with the detachable handles. You guys will all know what I'm talking about. I, I don't know. These were stuff that he either bought for himself or wanted for Christmas. He's a good saver, so he has money to do as he wishes. But yeah. So, uh, don't have an Xbox. This is a long winded, we don't have an Xbox because, <laughs> and that's why I don't care about the WAS whatever stuff in Sim Update 12. It doesn't, that doesn't mean anything to me. Now, the only thing it might mean is if it's, and I don't know why you wouldn't, if it cross, if if you're on Xbox and you can play with people who are on PC, then that's cool. That's more people in the world. So multiplayer, you know, you might see more real players. Um, I, if I start streaming, I will probably... I will probably... Well, that goes both right, ways, right? As long as... Uh, Mid-air collisions with multiplayer, you can turn it off if people are being annoying. Like if people are trying to, like, crash you on purpose. Because I don't need any help messing up. I can do that just fine by myself. Okay. Gotta be getting close. 20 minutes ET. 73 miles up. That's... Good day. That'll, yeah. So, we need to start briefing the approach again, just to make sure we have it. This one. No. Okay, ILS 110.9. That is there. You know what? I'm going to put that on 
Nav 2 also. That'll feed that guy. Nav 1 feeds this one, Nav 2 feeds that one. Okay. Uh, and I don't know... Well, used to they were chained, but can I put this one on V-Lock? I can't, and it, yeah, it doesn't affect... When they were chained, if you tried to change this one, this one would also change, but now I can use this one to, to truly feed this. See? It's already seeing it, I guess. Uh, that's an, uh, for the ILS. And... Yeah, I don't... And then... Does it have... Yeah, but it's not going to show the distance for me. ILS 25, that's correct. Low, yeah. IVVM, that's not it. So, yeah, it's looking at a different ILS. That's cool that, um... I don't... Where'd you... Uh... 127 decimal 5 for Barley 01. Wow, he took a while to answer that. Oh, no! Atlanta Center I've Barley, seen this before. Zero, ATC, level, they've stopped zero. talking. They've disappeared. It's over. No, I don't want to do any of that. I just need you to... Position... Okay, well, normally you just... Okay, so what screen is this? Is this Prox? No. Facility, city, and region. I don't want any of this. I would like to... Oh, you Descend see? and maintain flight level yeah. one nine or zero barley. Okay, zero. well, I'll mess with that some other time. We're descending, 19,000. All right, we will do IAS at 220. go to idle so it's gonna the gear horn's gonna go off that is perfectly fine we have a button for that stop <laughs> and moisture has not been an issue so and I don't expect it to be but let's just turn that off before I forget but yeah how did I get to how did I get to this screen Feedlock way, waypoint? I don't know what I accidentally hit. Default nav is here. Thanks for that. Can't really do anything. <laughs> That's very interesting. Um, how do I go back? What did I? I don't even know what I hit. Okay, can we go? Oh, and it comes back to this. No idea what I did. Press message to continue. It's not helpful. Okay, we're gonna be close to nineteen thousand. Okay. <laughs> Got to pay attention. And now I have to read my comms because ATC has quit talking. Well, they're printing, but the voice is stop talking. Great, because you need, you know, on approach. Well, we're on arrival right now, but you need one more thing to look at. Thank God this isn't going to be a true IFR approach. See the hills? There it is. Appalachians. Say yay. We're here. Uh, I wish I could fix that. I really do. But... Because now I'm worried that this isn't going to do what I asked it to. Oops. How do I tell you to go? Is this what it... Uh, clear, 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 clear. I don't, I don't need this. I want to go away. I want to go someplace else. I don't have a flight plan. Don't need a flight plan. Okay, well, I got to... 
Put some power back in here. approach. Okay, eventually. But we don't know what it's going to be yet. I mean, I have a good idea. It's going to be ILS. You know what? Maybe we'll try that and see if that fixes it. Uh, oh, it doesn't know where we're going because it's doing it to that, so no. That's not going to work. Is that why it's mad? Because we don't have a destination? Well, it's clear. 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 FPL. Uh, let's try that. We are going to... K. A. Uh, B. K bag. What? L. There we go, so... I put that in. Do that, and then can I activate that leg, or do I have to put us? Um, uh, menu. Yeah, let's see. I got to put a, a like a origin and destination. Hey, I got to learn this GPS. I know how to do it all on this one, but uh, let's select an approach. ILS 17 is what we think it's going to be. Uh, I don't know. Coming this way, it's going to be the. Is there an IIMO? Maintain 7,000 feet, Marley 01. I'm not going to really get to play with that a bunch here. 7,000. IAS. Oh. Yes, I hear you. It's fine. I don't know. I'll have to mess with that. Ah. Okay, we're going below 18,000. They have not given me the, uh, the uh, correct altimeter setting. And we're still with Atlanta Center, so should get an Atlanta Center altimeter that we're on the same wavelength as other aircraft in the area okay on descent uh, power levels idle 15 set local yeah I can't set local yet I've been given it lights as required pedo heat We've done all those things. Uh, descent checklist complete. Next will be approach. They said they had done s the sim update was supposed to do something to make ATC better, but uh, I see that bug is still around. But 2987, okay. We got a barometer reading. All right, pedal is in three minutes. We need to lose 7,000, eh, but not by pedal, right? This pedal's like off down here. 
much we need to be at 6,000. But you know what? We'll just... Pre we can... Hurry our descent a little more. Uh, let's tell our... Playboys in the back to sit down and put their seatbelts on. Turn off the coffee. I'm sure they need more, but... I don't want to clean it up. sim update stuff. No, we got so rudely interrupted by a descent. Um, if I... If you haven't been keeping up, um, my airline is using only turboprops. So we currently have Cessna 208, several King Airs, many ATRs, uh, a couple C-130s, and the ATRs were... Well, originally, the ATR 4272 uh, study level ATR 4272-600 was supposed to come out this month. I should be learning to fly that right now, and I was so looking forward to it. Even if they made me pay for it, I was going to do it. Um, but they pushed it to uh, sim, eight, the, sim Update 13 at the end of March, uh, April. So, that's a month away. It's okay. More time for me to gather information on flying an ATR-72. Track down a pilot's operating handbook and... Put together my checklists from their checklist. Uh, it's got a... I'm pretty sure it has... Uh, it has some sort of FMC. I think it's a McDo. Uh, and associated ancient, uh, uh, MFD PFTs. Atlanta Center Barley 01 is passing 9,000 feet, descending 7,000 feet. Descend and maintain 7,500 feet. Expect ILS runway 17 approach via Bravo Descend, Romeo you give me seven Alpha transition. Whatever. To Bravo Romeo Alpha Barley 01. Now I gotta climb, actually, or just not go as far. Slow down the. Okay, now let's get our. Well, this one will be easy. I got the rest of it done, so, uh... Oh, see, now this one shows the procedure turn. How do I... How do I make it do that? I don't know. Because watch, this one won't. Let's put in the same thing. And I'll do... Load. Hello. And we've been cleared... Oh. Yeah, we've been cleared to bra. There, direct. Just because I like being... Now, if I back this out... Watch. Oh, no, it's got it. Cool. It didn't have it earlier today. That's got the procedure turn. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not gonna have to do it manually. So I don't want to activate it. It's loaded. So now how do I tell you go away? I just want to go... I think they just totally took it off. Whatever. I have to learn this 530. Uh, this one I know. Inside and out. Uh, even the some of the features it doesn't have. Okay, so... Well, that just got easier. 
I thought I was going to have to manually do that, but now we just need to monitor the autopilot make sure it does it right. We should, next descent should be to 6,000. We're at 7,500. Speed's good for approach. Go ahead. Landing lights. Okay, let's go ahead and do our approach checklist. Lights as required. Cabin. Fuel balance. One, two, five. Decimal eight barley, zero one. Good balance. Asheville approach good. barley, zero That's one, seven thousand five hundred feet. Okay. Props full forward. And that's the end of the approach checklist. Next will be before landing. A okay, two nine or eight six. And now go ahead and bug. Three forty seven. Just in case something breaks, I can just go to heading mode, or at least I know where I'm supposed to go. So 347 is set. And then we need to make sure that that's on, just in case we need a timer to do the procedure term if the autopilot has a heart attack. Next altitude should be 6,000. And we'll be doing altitude on VS from now on. We're on approach. No more IIS is needed. We really want to hold 210 for now. A little more power. And then we need to be... We'll start our configuration after the procedure turn, and when we're on the localizer, we'll start our procedure turn. Yeah, I don't know if this is set up or not. 110.9. Is it responding in any way? It is, so... We'll be able to see the localizer here, and then we'll flip this one over if it doesn't flip on its own. But as long as I've got an ILS showing me, then I'm good. And we go... Nav to here ish. So to Wugag, and then we'll go to approach mode once we're at 4100. Well, once the glide slope comes down to a dot, a dot above. Oh, so there. I like this style better. I know this has a. And maintain 6, feet there it is. Hey, so. Yes. Do minus 600, pull the power back 35%. All the lights are on. And somebody's home. There's the airport. We're going to go straight down the runway the other side, do a procedure turn, and then come back into our ILS approach. We are not... Where's our... Okay. We are descending, but probably a little faster, I think.
there, 6,000. And we'll start slowing down a little bit. No, we'll wait. No need. Oh, now the suspense is killing me. So I guess they did fix something, because... I don't know, maybe, but this mo uh, this afternoon I flew a procedure turn and it it wasn't there, so I had to manually do it. This one's here. It might just be certain places. I mean, that other place was a regional airport. I mean, honestly, so is Asheville, but... I mean. So we don't need to worry about minimums because we can see. We just need to make sure that we follow the approach. Or in this case, that the autopilot properly follows the approach. It didn't lose the turn, did it? No, it's still there. Keep it around 210 for this portion. Once we come out of the procedure turn, we'll... Uh, Descend and maintain 5,600 feet, Farley 01. Okay. Outer marker. Mountains and plains don't mix. Lessons from Barley. Do up there, nothing left to do over there. Fuel is balanced. Like, uh... Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna keep it around 200 because as soon as we come out of this procedure turn, I'm gonna start uh, configuring. And we gotta be below 202 for flaps, then below 180 for gear. And we'll keep it hovering right around there. Doesn't mean we wanna take all day to get there, does it? Alright, it's following the procedure turn. Nifty. It didn't do that earlier today. And once I get that video edited and put out, you'll see. I are not crazy. All right, so after the procedure turn, next will be five thousand. Thousand feet, Barley zero one. Okay, we'll do it. Uh, should be okay to do it now. Okay. scenery though this is the Appalachians Western North Carolina been there several times I 
again, I like turning that off because that is not a navigation. The that pink triangle is not a navigational tool, and sometimes is can get wrong and give you bad guidance. The GPS is the tool. And if you use the little pink triangle, you're the tool. All right, we need to get ready to. Grab some flaps. Okay, one notch of flaps. We want to be completely configured before we get to Keens. Okay, next is going to be 4100. Says user. Not helpful. Wugog. Okay. Go ahead and here. Add power. All right. So all that's left is our last notch of flaps. We'll do that when we hit uh, Keens. Just before Keens, and then just... Uh wow. See, this is the kind of turbulence you'd expect in the mountains, right? Not ridiculous, but it's bouncing us around pretty good. Even for a decent... Uh, you know, decently heavy aircraft. Airport in sight. We can go visual if everything if everything goes south. We can go visual. Here comes our glide slope. So we've got a localizer. Tower on one two one decimal one barley zero one. We're going to localizer. Asheville Tower Barley zero one 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 miles north inbound ILS runway one seven approach. Clear to land runway 17 Barley 01. There we go. And that's time for approach mode. Uh, see approach, glide slope. Uh, landing gear, three greens, down and locked, flaps full, power levels, uh, prop full forward, yaw damper off. Hmm, this will be a little bit of a bumpy ride, boys. Make sure I, I did tell them to, yep. Uh, we can keep it a little faster than that right now. That's our final approach speed. We're not there yet. But, as desired, by the time we get to Keens, we are fully figured. Fully configured, not fully figured. That's something completely different. So unless we have to go around, I won't need this, so I'm going to get that out of my face. And I already know it's 2,500, so we can set that. And then, uh... Bug the heading because it'll be straight out. There. Okay, so we're set for go around.
gear down and locked. No condition. High idle. RPMs are full. Lights all on. Uh, yaw damper is off. Fasten seatbelt seat is on. Full fuel is balanced. Alright, so... Here's what I mean. There's no way we're landing with it. Well, no, never mind. No, it's better. Never mind. Ignore me. Yeah. Belay that comment. Oh, we've got, look, a slight right to left. Crosswind, not a whole lot. There's that turbulence. Still looks a lot better. You can go away. I need to get ready to go. I mean, honestly, I could have taken this over a while ago because it, it's a full visual approach, but... Uh, I'll take I'll take it the rest of the way. Thank you, Mr. Autopilot. Nope, 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 nope. Trim. Now let's get down to our... Okay. So there's the wind's coming off. Side. So let's try to aim for the right side of the runway, shall we? A little more. A little high. Turbulence is definitely there. It's not ridiculous, but it is there. It's about one seven zero at nine knots. Get it back to 110. We're on we're on the glide path. Or there's 110. Good speed. It was 110. There we go. Now we're On the right side of the runway. Well, the trees might be shielding us from the wind. I don't know what the new model looks like. But power's out. Slide down and a little bit of a balloon there. Landing time logged. Not great. Not terrible. And there's reversers. Back to normal. Flaps are up. That's not a taxiway, is it? Looks kind of like one. But it's not. It fooled me. Okay, well. It's... Instructions are turned next taxiway, but I gotta find the next taxiway. All the way at the end of the runway? That looks like a taxiway, too. Because it is one. Alpha. All right. And as usual one, two, for my on-air flights, for Barley zero one. Uh, we'll just go ahead and shut it down right here because it doesn't really matter, and taxing to gate isn't going to achieve anything. No extra points for that. So now it's just shut down. Go away. Oh, really? All right. You go back to low idle. How much fuel did we end up with? So I can mark that. Looks like uh, a thousand. Yeah, we'll call it a thousand. Okay. Leave the beacon on. All the other lights are off. Uh, let's see. We don't need oxygen is off. Off, off, off. Uh, hello. Oh, no. Nothing.
anything over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Inverters. Okay, I believe we are ready to start shutting down engines. And let the passengers start gathering their stuff. And left engine. Right engine. Engine off time logged. The flight is finished. It has been right, guys. by on air. Thanks for flying with Barley on Friday night flights. Uh, I don't know if I'll do... I may do another short one here if I can find something cool, but... Uh, in the meantime, this was a very pleasant flight. Nothing major. No... <laughs> no equipment exploding like the earlier flight. Uh, just nice, pleasant, easy approach. If you like these kind of full flight videos, please remember to like or subscribe. That's the only indication besides your comments that tells me I'm doing it right or what I can do better. For now, Barley out.